Hello everybody and welcome back to another day of Gloomhaven. A little bit sooner than expected, I know. Again, um, some issues with a mod for digital meant that instead we'll be doing this on Monday, since we won't be able to do this anyway on Friday due to um, scheduling conflicts, we'll say. Okay, so today we're starting with Scenario 65. Um, as I mentioned, <clears throat> I guess I should have just said all this once I started the VOD, but... So, last Friday we... We did plus three difficulty, and we just barely lost, but we sh really should have won under more normal luck circumstances. Um, accordingly, I thought plus three difficulty is the correct difficulty level for us, but here we're actually going back down to plus two. But the reason for that isn't because like you lose and you drop the difficulty, which you also can do. It's more just because the Void Warden leveled. Uh, we would actually be up to level five monsters now, rather than level four, but just from a one character, one level difference, without even, for example, being able to buy a second small item or anything. So... Uh, while I thought that level 4 monsters were the appropriate difficulty level that our party wanted to be facing, level 5 monsters are definitely not. So accordingly, we've just dropped back down to plus 2. Again, it's more about finding the right monster difficulty level rather than finding like the right number modifier for the, the level. So here we're just playing plus 2 difficulty, which I feel, still think should be very challenging. Doing scenario 65, which is the random side scenario that we unlocked. So this is kill all enemies and loot all treasure tiles. So there's going to be 5 treasure tiles, I guess. No, I guess we know that there are five like that. Anyway, it's not like I haven't done this scenario before, so looking at it like that, it's not such a big deal. There's just going to be one in each room. Um, and then, other than that, there are no special rules that constantly modify the scenario. There's just four curses added to each character's deck. We added four curses into the Void Warden's deck, four curses into the Red Guard's deck, and two into Hatchet's deck. Are you playing this on Tabletop Simulator? Yes, I am playing this on Tabletop Simulator. Exactly. I'm using... Um, on Tabletop Simulator, I'm using this mod right here, the Gloomhaven Fantasy Setup mod, and I've just used the uh, Gloomhaven Jaws the Lion for Other Tables mod, which I've imported, used to import the Jaws the Lion characters into the Fantasy Setup mod. The Fantasy Setup mod on Tabletop Simulator for Gloomhaven is free and incredible. Really, really well done. It's a joy to play. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's all we've got. Uh, I did my city event back when I was in town, no effect. And for a road event, we had to consume one small item. We consumed the Void Warden Stamina Potion, which I think is uh, very slightly the least important. I don't know. I mean, an argument really could be made anywhere. Uh, while playing in such a competitive difficulty, I'm really afraid to not have my healing push on the Red Guard, so that's why I went like this. Okay. I don't think there's anything else I need to tell. So we're going to start here, we've got to do all these rooms, we're going to go ahead and grab our Battle Goals. Because my nickname is Mr. Battle Goals. Nice, might have to look into it, currently playing Jaws Line with friends once a week, loving it so far, but just finished Scenario 4. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think most board gamers these days would agree that, I mean, well, who have experienced the Tabletop Simulator, that given the current global circumstances, um, I think Tabletop Simulator is uh, indispensable, is just extremely worthwhile to have. That being said, I mean, you can always wait. For example, there should be, there's going to be like the Steam Fall Sale, which should be in maybe three weeks or something like that. But I don't know, I guess it just depends on the urgency. Uh, it's on sale, almost every sale, so it's pretty easy to pick it up on sale, and it's great. I mean, not only is there Gloomhaven, but there's just hundreds and hundreds of other free games on here. For example, I play Terraforming Mars on here for free. I play Spirit Island. I play Mage Knight. I play. I have played Descent in the past. I don't know. It's just great. Obviously, it does take some getting used to. Like for, At this point, it's just second nature for me to control it, but the, I think the biggest barrier to entry for people playing a tabletop simulator is just familiarizing yourself with like moving around and doing everything in it, which will take you about a week, I would say. Um, but after that, you should be really comfortable with it, and you should barely even notice you're playing on it. And it definitely, I mean, so playing Gloomhaven Digital is definitely the fastest way for me to play Gloomhaven Solo, but then Tabletop Simulator and then Physical. Like, I probably play through a scenario maybe 50% faster in Tabletop Simulator than I do playing Physical. Oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it certainly has been in some humble bundles in the past. Uh, okay, so these are our battle goals from top to bottom, from Void Warden to Red Guard. Uh, obviously the Void Warden just... Like, it's unfortunate, but we just can't ever kill monsters, really, as the Void Warden. Because almost all the things we use to kill monsters don't give us credit for killing. Which is actually kind of stupid, to be clear. I really wish that that was 
I wish that that had been addressed for the Void Warden. I understand that theoretically there are also some things that are like, don't kill any monsters, etc. But I think there are more things that involve killing things than not killing things. Especially for personal quests and stuff like that. I mean, admittedly, personal quests don't exist in this, but still. Regardless, we cannot do this in the Void Warden. So, that's pretty easy. We're just going to take this. We have to be at max HP at the end of the scenario. Which is maybe something we can do. It depends. Okay. Here we have to be at two or less hit points, or we have to use no items. Two or less hit points at the end of the scenario, or use no items. Um, yeah, I mean, use no items is not realistic on a competitive difficulty. So, yeah, we'll try to be at two or less, but again, who knows. So one person has to be at full at the end, one person has to be at two or less. I mean, we are a tank, so or the tank in the party, so it's certainly possible that we can be at two or less. Ah yes, kill three or fewer monsters. If only we could have switched these up, or gained 13 or more experience. Um, I think we never do either of these, but there's a chance we can try to do this one. It's interesting because people seem to say that Hatchet has great experience gain, but I have not witnessed that at all thus far. Hatchet has, in both my Jaws of the Lion campaign and now in my Base Gloomhaven campaign with, with Hatchet, Hatchet has always been the character with the least experience by a significant margin, too. All right. So, oh, what are we into here? Have our battle goals. Let me take a look for changing cards. All right, let's grab all of everyone's cards quickly. Oh. Uh, battle mark these. There we go. Sort here. Sure. Um, so this is theoretically the type of scenario, since we're fighting, I think, Vermlings, Hounds, and Inak Shaman. Ugh, Inak Shaman. That's a, a rough thing to put in the mix. So this is the type of scenario where I think Close Cuts is actually kind of decent. I mean, specifically against Vermlings, but it's not good against Hounds. It's obviously not good against Shaman. And the biggest thing is that I think that taking this sort of card for AoE scenarios, so AoE scenarios are scenarios with, like, small point value enemies like Vermlings and Hounds and Vipers um, is generally good, but I think not when you're playing on against two monster levels. I mean, really, in this case, three monster levels higher than your character. Because let's, let's show quickly here. So here, a Vermling Scout has six health. So normally, at this point, we would be facing Vermling Scouts with... Oh yeah, it's actually even the other side. I mean, to be clear... Based on Hatch's level, ignoring the rest of the party, this is the level of Vermling Scout you'll be facing. But even with the rest of the party level, this is the level of Vermling Scout a normal Hatch player would be facing right now. We'd be at plus zero difficulty. Plus zero difficulty would give us level two Vermling Scouts. Against the level two Vermling Scout, Close Cuts just kills each one you hit, right? But against the level four Vermling Scout, it's not even close. It does half of the, their life. So, again, this sort of melee AoE attack just gets a lot worse when we increase difficulty levels because we have to put ourselves into a dangerous spot to do it without a lot of probability possibility of killing the enemies that we hit especially since we can't use the favorite on one of these attacks so well in general i think if you were like playing a normal difficulty you would want to bring this in for this scenario here we're certainly not going to okay um here so aoe's for us are a little bit better because we're a tank we can like it's more natural for us to get in the center. That being said, these enemies do have retaliate. How much? So let's see. In the first room, for example, you were three hounds versus two scouts. So it's more hounds than scouts. Yeah, one and two retaliate, respectively. So attacking AoE into them isn't really the way we want to go. Typically, when we want to AoE them as the red guard here, since we're going for a shield spikes build, our way of AoEing is just to play shields, which is just a better way to AoE. So the only question is, should we bring Flaming Sickle? Mm. I mean, I pretty much love all the cards we have. The only consideration would be we could potentially get rid of Desert Knight. Desert Knight isn't going to be good against either of these enemy types because they're small, low-value enemies, so disarming them isn't very good. It's only going to be good against Shaman. But even against Shaman, it's kind of weird to use because you still like we can never go faster. Actually, we can at 6. We can go before the Shaman can do their disgusting stuff. So yeah, I guess we should keep that for this reason. Keep this for that reason. There we go. And the only card would just be the fire generator, but we've got fire with this. I don't think that's so important. 
Um, hey, surprised you don't play extra life on Hatchlet. I personally really like the plus two range since your max range and your attacks are three. Ah, hey, the death. Yeah, so General CGO always tries to get me to play extra lift on Hatchet. Um, I said I'm, I'm still like keeping in flux. I think either you do stopping power extra lift. The biggest thing is that I don't think extra range is actually that useful on Hatchet, is the best way of putting it. Because Hatchet, like the biggest you can move is a move three, right? So if you attack something at range five, I mean, you're never using your favorite. Hey, least Doing well. How about you? If you attack something at range 5, you're not using the favorite. And if you're not using the favorite, you're not really very effective, right? I mean, what the hatchet wants to do is be either attacking with the favorite or picking up the favorite as much as possible, with the exception of when doing AoE attacks. So if you attack something far away, you can't use the favorite because you won't be able to get to it. I mean, that's not completely true. Like, theoretically, you can attack something far away with a lot of health, and then the following turn, like, move up and do a follow-through or a repeat shot on it. But typically, that would require a high health enemy, right? And... High health enemies aren't usually far away from you and also significant at the same time. The only real exception to this would be, like, summoners, essentially. So theoretically, it's good against them. But ranged enemies typically don't have that high of health, so you don't want to be doing... You know, you don't want to throw the favorite and then have to do a repeat shot or fall through on one of them while they're that far away from you. And otherwise, I think, generally speaking, long range is not very useful in this class. I'd rather fight front to back. And therefore, I prefer using stopping power to extra lift. First of all, because stopping power, if I don't have the wind, is still just an attack 3 rather than attack 2. Like, attack 3 range 2 is definitely better than attack 2 range 3. Um, and generally, I actually just think the push is a little bit more valuable than the uh, the additional range on the other card. And especially, like, the fact that it, it's better without wind means that I can lose power pitch and still have this be a playable card. Whereas if I lose power pitch, I consider extra lift not really to be playable. But again, I do have another viewer who suggests that I use... Um, extra lift instead so i'm certainly keeping an eye open i'm basically i'm trying to keep track of the number of times that i wish stopping power had been extra lift and on friday when we played there wasn't a single instance of that but the previous week we played there was so we'll see just gonna quickly blow my nose All right, I'm back. So um, on the Void Warden, now that we got our level three card, we do need to cut something. It's probably this, since we took up took another heal card anyway with much better initiative. It's a shame because Black Boon's bottom is actually pretty good. Now nah, there's just nothing really else to cut though. I mean, there's also the multi-target heal, but that also makes gift give and take better. And I think it, it's better, in general, it would be better to have one big tar single target heal and one small multi-target heal rather than have two big heals. Also, excuse me, obviously taking Black Boon and not having Close to the Abyss, not really the way you want to go. So we'll go like this. And yeah, Close to the Abyss, our Black Boon does create dark, but we kind of typically have more dark than we could use. So I guess the only question now is should we also just cut no, I, don't, I was going to say we could cut the other heal, but I don't think that's necessary. Okay. I think we're good, then. Let's do it. One last shuffle for good luck. Alright, so we get to start in these five hexes. Whoops. So, what are their stats? So, they have three and four each and these have four movement and three attack all right so they're pretty much always reaching us so probably something like this here there's four surface area here there's three surface area yep I mean, obviously these can range but they only range to attack three out of five times or three out of eight times so it's still better to minimize melee surface area and I think we're just going to do setup turns while we wait for them to come to us this probably makes the most sense there's no real reason to rush we all benefit a lot from having gotten a Persistent Loss up. This is a long scenario, so playing Persistent Losses is going to have a real cost. I mean, this scenario is going to be tough, without a doubt. Okay, so then what are we doing in addition to this? Like, as usual, we'll create Wind. I don't really want to be focused, so I'd rather go later. As for us, I should count on them reaching us, so I should probably play some Shield this turn. So just go with Swift Strength. 
to gain shield this turn. And what am I doing next turn? Like healing sands bottom plus one of these tops? Yeah, that's probably fine. Or maybe even one of these tops plus blinding sickle. Either or. Regardless, getting some shield to mitigate a bit this turn. Um, 16 initiative is faster than anything scouts can do and is faster than all but one of the hounds attacks. So it should still be effective. As for us, I think we'll just do our typical starting turn, which is um, wait for them to come to us. I guess we should go as late as possible then and stun one of them for the next round. Since I think it's not possible. It actually is possible. If they get the minus... If these if these do ranged attacks and these get the, the pierce attack, minus move pierce attack, they actually won't be within range for our stun. That being said, if all that happens... I mean, if these don't reach us, it's also just a pretty good turn for us regardless, since we get a lot of setup. And yeah, sure, I'll lose Freeze the Soul. And because I don't have Stamina Potion, I won't be able to get back this rest cycle. But I still think it's pretty unlikely that this happens, and obviously it's high upside. And even the worst downside isn't very bad. All right. Battle goals check. I think everything check. Let's try to set up properly again. Okay. Let's go. 26 from Hounds. Please not... Uh, 29 is a ranged attack, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, well. At least it's not the poison range attack, so whatever. We'll survive. Okay, so Red Guard goes first. We're going to gain two experience by activating Shield Spikes. And we're just going to... I mean, I guess I want the Hounds to be attacking me, not attacking Hatchet. At the same time, I'm going to take so many attacks this turn. I mean, the Hounds do go before. The real question is, like, should I go here so that all the Hounds hit me, or should I stay here so then one of the Hounds will hit the Hatchet? Like, Hatchet taking a little bit of damage isn't such a big deal, and I think I'd rather distribute the damage a little bit. That being said, it does mean I deal one less damage, because then obviously I'm not getting to retaliate on that target. I mean, I suppose we have a super early giant heal from the Void Warden if we need it. So, yeah, sure, let's just move the Red Guard there. Let's tank up. So, I, I, I just discard this every time, but it's actually active right now. I do have one shield. Okay, so here come the Hounds. Here come the Hounds. I can choose to have this one here, here. I guess I'd rather have it away from Hatchet so we can do our Disorienting Barrage combo next turn. I guess that's another reason for doing it like this, to avoid Retaliate and Disadvantage. Okay, so all of these are attacking. This is just a plus zero, plus zero turn. So these are all going to be attacks for three. Nothing special. So two, we have to use hide armor. I'll I'll do all the things afterwards. We don't use anything else here, though. Two, we have to use hide armor. I mean, I, theoretically, we could use a shield, but it doesn't change anything. Okay, and wow. Jeez. I mean, that's it's pretty fortunate. <laughs> it scares me, though. I guess we could consider that this is like the reverse karma for what happened to us on Friday. But I, whenever a scenario starts like this, it worries me. Okay, so here we have two shield. We we block both, deal two, block both, deal two, block one, deal one. And we just have to use both charges for hide armor. Theoretically, we could have used the heater shield instead of one of the charges. But it's always better to have this than one charge here because we can always choose when we use this, whereas this is mandatory. And this is significant for us because obviously our shield gives us retaliate on melee attacks, but not on ranged attacks. Okay, minus one move, minus one attack. So attack threes and attack twos here with three movement and two movement with three range doesn't matter yeah it's always gonna be enough okay so they both attack the red guard so a three and then a two okay well fortunately we've got our helmet so the three is just a three um do i feel the need to use my heater shield here no i think i'd rather use that to get retaliate damage in the future so i'll take two sure and i'll take one all right i mean all things considered we did an admirable job there i think hatchets up we're going to activate the favorite You just put one here. And then we're going to move and create wind. But we're just going to stay where we are. Because again, next turn we're going to do Disorienting Barrage. The wind didn't really matter. But it's fine. And then here we gain two experience and activate Master Influence. And here we get to stun an enemy and curse ourselves. Fortunately, cursing ourselves doesn't matter at all. I'm going to stun the one next to me. This is just a slightly more dangerous one for obvious reasons. Um, because if I go before the red guard, which I don't think is going to happen, but if I were to go before the red guard, it would just be be worse. Obviously, stunning this would be the best, but it's a range 4, not range 3, so what can you do? Okay. And that's the end of the round. So then...
Yeah, I think just double direct damage seems good here. Plus some shielding. And creating the fire here sets us up to use this for shield next turn. Don't really think there's anything better. I mean, the only other question is just do we use this top, but creating the light, yeah, that would set us up to do this shield, but the fire sets us up to do this shield, and I think I prefer just to get the immediate one direct damage. Obviously, the pull isn't doing anything here, but that's still fine. This is still two direct damage to all adjacent enemies, and then also one shield. Okay. Uh, Hatchet's turn is really obvious. I mean, like, this is just the dream situation for this combo, a fancy hat plus disorienting barrage. We've got... Um, a number of small help, small enemies nearby, all ready to be AoE'd down. And theoretically, we can throw the favorite into one of them if we want. Okay, so both of them are pretty well set up. So now the real question is, what do we do? Mm, I think, honestly, just a sign. At the same time, one of them is stunned. Yeah, actually, we probably shouldn't need Signs of the Void here, right? So this enemy is stunned, and we'll probably kill one of these by throwing the Favorite. So we get the two direct damage to each of them from the Red Guard, plus an attack two if we use the Favorite, therefore an attack five on one of these. I think it's fine to use the Favorite, for example, here, because next turn we can just go Retrieval here, pick it up, and throw it again. So it's very little cost to use it here and eliminate the enemy. So with a stunned enemy and a dead enemy, the extra shield is probably not at its best this turn. I mean, that being said, it's only going to get worse from here, I think. Hmm. At the same time, just doing a Wicked Scratch here seems pretty good. Ooh, there is actually wind. Ooh, the wind does serve a purpose. If we do Wicked Scratch on top, what do we do on bottom? Not really anything. Just have good initiative. I mean, I guess... We could just do something like this. Initiative doesn't matter. It does matter, because gifting an attack here to kill this is pretty good before it goes. I don't want to use this because I really want to keep the big heal. I think we're going to need it. So maybe I just use this bottom then? 15 or 13 initiative are significant because the worst thing the hounds can do is at 19. I mean, the worst thing they could do for us is at 19. So accordingly, yeah, I think this makes sense. Just using this as a default bottom here, even though the top is so good with the red guard. Oops. Like this. And I guess, worst case scenario, we can always audible. If we see, the, based on what they're going to do, this would be better. We could always do this top and then this bottom, which is not that bad either. Okay. Hounds at 19. Yep, happy we played around that. And the Rungly Scouts, 69, is just going to be, yeah, plus one attack. Melee attacks. Sure. Okay, so Hatchet's up first. So we're going to use the bottom of Fancy Hat to add plus one to all our attacks this round. And we're going to use the top of Disorienting Barrage. And we're going to use the Goggles. So this gives us an attack two muddle with advantage, targeting two, four, and six in that order. Okay. Love to get rid of one of my curses here. Okay, we did. Beautiful. Okay, so we got plus zero here. Oh, I sorry, I said I was using the favorite here. Yeah, yeah. I did mention that before. I just kind of got a little bit too excited. It's not like the outcome of that attack would make it any different. If anything. Based off of the what I flipped, it would have been better to have used the No, it actually wouldn't change anything. It never changed anything. All right, so the favorite is used on this enemy here for plus three. So then we did three damage here, and we got a crit, so we did four damage here. Okay. And then we're done. Uh, those other ones are muddled. I'm not going to place the muddles because I think they're just going to die. Okay, so then the red guard goes. So we're going to use the top of Barbaric Instincts. Shield one, pull one, range two. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage. So create fire, and then we're going to do this, creating light. So all adjacent enemies suffer one damage, then we do a loot one. Hey! Anyaseo! Um, okay, so two damage there, two damage there, two damage there. Oops, I don't know, that's not what I wanted. Oh no, you're not defeated. Yeah, yeah never mind. Okay, and then that also allows us to loot this. Man, my hair today. That's what happens when you go to bed with wet hair. You wake up, and it looks like nonsense. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have one shield. We could have pulled, but there's nothing we could have pulled, so we're good. All right, so Void Warden's up next. Hmm. 
what are the hounds doing? Yeah, they have they hit for four or five actually. Man, it just sucks that this one has one health there. Oh yeah, sorry, the favorite should be here. We're gonna make an attack for a million to something with one health, but it does stop an attack five. Is there any real way around this? Otherwise, we could gift the red guard movement to go to here. Then when this attacks us, it would only attack for three. And we would have two shield, which would make us better against these as well. That might actually just be better then. Because it's so overkill. Basically, we would be accepting one incoming damage. But then we'd be mitigating two more. Yeah, that's probably better. I mean, we also don't create dark, which is a little bit of something. But I think it's fine. I mean, yeah, we do have some dark payoffs, which are not insignificant. Especially like this one, actually, because just getting a free attack two here would be nice. This is one health. But I, I still think this is better. It definitely sets us up better against these. Okay, so we will do that. Also, it does give us strengthen. Um, so one ally within range three may perform shield one. The same ally may perform move two. And again, we have to specific, uh, specifically go right to here. If we go further, then this will get plus two on its attack. By being here, this will not get its bonus, its swarming bonus on its attack. So we move there, and we give the red guard one additional shield. And then we perform a loot one. If only we could get some money with that. And then a strengthen. And we'll certainly put the strengthen on the uh, hatchet. Who benefits most from strengthen? Okay, so the hounds go. This one's stunned. This one attacks the red guard. Plus one. Okay. Oh, that hurts a bit. I'm not going to use my shield, because I'm going to get attacked more this turn, and it wouldn't deal bonus damage here. So this attack is for four. We have two shield, which does kill this. And we take two damage. Okay. And then the Vermling Scouts go. Um, would I rather the scout... Basically, the question is, would I rather them be like this and this? Or would I rather them be like this and this? Hmm. Probably like this and this is fine. Okay, so they both go there and there, and they both attack the red guard. The attacks are for five and four, respectively. Ow. So the five, okay, minus one is four. Here I'm just going to use all the shielding I can. So four, we have three shields, we do three damage back and we take one, and then the other one for four. Okay, so three, so we take one damage and we deal two back. Okay. And the favorite is just under the red guard, by the way. Okay, so our turns are pretty simple. Well, one of our turns is really simple, right? This plus this. We need center mass as our top attack because of the initiative on this attack. And we need to play retrieval because by going here, using retrieval, we could go here, but no hatchet. No, you've got enough coins. Going here, pick up the hatchet or the favorite, throw it here. We get to make an attack six with advantage on the elite before it can go, which does kill it. Should kill it. Technically, we could draw a minus two, or we could draw a curse and a miss, or a minus two and, an, and some combination of miss and curse. But most of the time, should kill. Ah, there's just this stupid enemy here. Just a bit of annoyance. Oh, yeah, but we've also... Oh, so I did really want... No, I mean, it wouldn't matter. Oh, yeah. Nah, I, I actually did really want them to go here and here. But I guess it's too late now, because I've seen flips. Because then, actually, the, we've got both the elements on the red guard. We could have come here and hit both of them with our top attack that hits two targets. Ah, uh, yeah, we messed that up. Messed that up, because I could have had the elite go here, and then this one from here could go to here. Here would have been equal. Ah, damn it. I There was actually a reason to do it one way, but it's too late now. We've already flipped. Okay. So what does that mean? Well. I think what that means then is I'm going to do two attacks and create dark. Ah, this initiative isn't fast enough, though, is it? Because by creating dark, I can do this. At the same time, we've got a million curses in the Void Warden's deck, so we're not even that likely to kill this. Hold up. I guess we can attack this with Desert Knight and then use the bottom attack, consuming light, to hit this one, which puts it at one. And then with the dark that's generated, we should be able to attack. 26 is typically going to be faster than the scouts. So that's our bottom, so what do we do on top? We're going to play heals at some point, but we don't need to do that yet. So we can just go ahead and do this now, actually. This also gives a slightly better initiative. Yep, this works out across the line, I think. 
Okay, so that's sort of scary. This is less scary. Anyway, Red Guard's up first. Um, yeah, I mean, it always makes sense to make the Desert Knight attack here, just to... Because then what happens if if we miss and miss here? Then this is going to get to do a multi-target attack, but it just multi-targets for two damage. It's not that big of a deal. Plus with disadvantage, sure. All right, so first thing we do is we use Desert Knight top. We create... Oops, not the fire. We create ice and dark, and we can attack at range two, so we're going to attack this hound here. Okay. So that hound's dead. And then we're going to use the bottom of Warrior of the Sun. We're going to consume light. Gain one experience. We're going to make an attack three muddle, targeting the regular here. Because again, the elite will die to the uh, hatchet. Okay, well, I guess that certainly solves that. Man, Red Guard just tore through this room. Alright, so the Void Warden's up next. Um, so I could save the Dark for next turn, but there's no enemies left, and I don't have any benefits of dark when there's no enemies left so let's just do this to gain an experience so we'll consume the dark here uh, I guess now hatchet can go here son of a bitch I swear this hatchet all right so we're gonna do one two three to here which does at least get us a coin which is important and this is an attack two targeting the adjacent enemy hoping to draw curse hmm, okay well, that's actually not bad. Man, I love those modifiers. So we get a heal one on an ally, and we do two damage. And then I'm going to do the top of give and take. I'm going to poison myself or one ally within range two, and then I'm going to bless and strengthen another ally within range three. Um, I'd rather get the blesses on Hatchet as much as possible, because obviously Hatchet makes bigger attacks and just attacks more often, since Redguard spends a fair number of turns shielding in this build. Um, so I'll poison. I could poison myself, but actually I think I'll be able to get away with doing the... Uh, Oh, but I don't want to poison... Yeah, no, no, no. I, I don't want to poison the red guard here. Okay. So I actually had to do this before moving. So now it's a little bit late. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Damn. So what I should have done then... I mean, this is fine. What I should have done is do the top before moving. I just figured that I could move and get... Typically... Nah. The general rule in Gloomhaven is you want unknown information before known information. I mean, in almost any game, actually, you want to, like, you want to discover, if you get to make a decision based off of something, it's better to figure out something you don't know yet, and then make your decision based off of that, if you're always playing the two same actions. You just could inform how you do them. And for example, here, like, for some reason I could have played a default attack if I felt the need to. I don't know how I would have had to, but still. The problem is, here, I just wasn't thinking about this correctly, I actually want every one of my heals on the red guard to actually be a heal, right? So what would have actually been best is to do the top, poison the hatchet, and then bless and strengthen the red guard. Even though the bless is less valuable there, because then when I do next turn, when I do close to the abyss, when I remove the poison from the hatchet, it's still going to be one bless in both places, except then I'll actually get two healing here. I guess that wouldn't change too much, though, because this is still a heal six no matter what. Hmm. So maybe that's still fine then. So what if I poison here, bless here, the next turn? But the problem is we're probably not spending two more turns doing nothing. I mean, Hatchet does need to move a fair amount. That's tough, actually. Hmm. It's too late now. I mean, I guess I should just try to give out as many blesses as possible, especially to counteract the curses, right? Sure. Okay, so let's do it like that then. So let's bless and strengthen Hatchet. What I mean by give out as many blesses as possible is, I mean, let's poison Red Guard, even though that's going to make healing him a little bit more annoying. And let's poison, or, and, and then, yeah, do it like this. Rather, if we poison ourselves, it has no cost, because we can easily just remove it with, for example, next turn we use close to the best, we heal ourselves to remove the poison, then heal the Red Guard. But again, since our other heal is a heal six, I think this is actually fine. Okay. And, oh yeah, this great start. We consumed it and created it. Okay, so then Hatchet's up. Um, do we even need to recover the favorite to do this? Because we're going to go here with retrieval, but can we just attack before using the favorite here? I mean, we're making an attack three on something with three health. It is pretty bad if we fail to kill it. We only have an... We have one additional minus two in our deck, which is the only... No, we have a minus one as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's just be safe here. It just gives us too much damage if we let him hit. Okay. Again, if I didn't have those additional curses in my deck, then I would... I guess I removed one of them. So what are my odds here? 
let's see. I have one curse, one miss, one minus two, one minus one. So I would have to draw four. I would have to draw two of those across my four draw. Uh, yeah, I'd have to draw two of the four in my two draws, which is not very likely. It's actually quite unlikely. But if it happens, it's pretty bad. And what's the downside of putting the favorite there? Basically, the downside of putting the favorite there is that next turn we have to do a move two rather than a move three. We actually only have, we have a move two and a move three anyway, so we're always going to have to do a move two. Yep, that's fine then. Okay, so we're going to first do, and this is why retrieval is just so important, we're going to do a move one, loot one. Going to here. Picking up all these coins, because it's definitely Hatchet who needs all the coins in this party. Ugh, God, playing at a party with Hatchet is the worst. I'm kidding. Okay, and that gets us the favorite back, and we're going to throw the favorite at the elite with center mass. Nah, we would have had it anyway. All right. But again, I think there was basically no cost, and it just made it much safer. Okay. So, we're going to save our bigger move. So we're going to do our smaller move for now with this. The other card really doesn't matter. It's unlikely we're going to be attacking the following turn. But theoretically, there is a chance we attack the following turn. In that case, it's better to have this combo, because Repeat Shot is our best remaining attack. Okay. So we want to do this, removing the poison to give a bless. And I suppose we just want to keep on moving along and save our better initiative and big movement. The question is, how much do we need to move here? I mean, I guess a move three this turn wouldn't be bad. Would not be bad at all. Sure. So let's just do something like this then. Okay. And so we don't have any elements. We might as well use this opportunity to gain one experience by playing the top of Healing Sands. And we can heal ourselves for a bit after the Void Warden removes the poison for us. This way the Void Warden isn't locked into having to play Taunting Fate next turn. We'll see. I think this is fine. We still have this as a move four plus this with Light the following turn as an attack four push one, which is, you know, certainly respectable. So overall, I think this lines up quite decently. And we don't have the strength in here anymore. All right, so Void Warden's first. We're going to do the top of Close to the Abyss. Heal two, range two, target two. We're going to, one of the targets doesn't matter. Basically, this is just to remove the poison from the Red Guard and give the Red Guard a bless. Since whenever we heal off poisons with this, we get blesses. And then we're going to do a move three with Suggestion. And I guess we'll, I mean, it doesn't really matter if we go to the left or right first, but we'll go to the left first because Void Warden decides. All right, we're going to do a move three that creates light here. One, two, three to there. And then we're going to gain one experience and heal ourselves for four. Okay, and then the hatchet goes, and we just do a move two. Doesn't matter with which card, we don't have any elements or anything like that. So just to there. Okay. End the round. Uh, okay, so how likely is it that we could hit a target from here? Pretty likely. One, two, three with our boots. We can even go to there. Yeah, definitely seems fine to go into the room this turn then. Okay, so let's do it. Remainder of my tea. So if we're doing that, attacking with this seems pretty good. We may need to move... But there's a chance we could give the bonus attack. Otherwise, this is also... I mean, like, just getting a disarm for the following round is pretty good. No, I think we want to deal damage here. The Red Guard has plenty of life at this point. And we'll have a bit of shield. I think damage is generally going to be better. So let's actually play these two cards then. Because we're likely to short rest, and I'd rather keep Taunting Faith than Lure of the Void. And I'm certainly going to play Gift of the Void top. And because we would have to use... Gift of the Void for initiative here anyway, because we need to wait for Hatchet to get up to us. We couldn't use Taunting Fate's initiative. I mean, we could, but then we would be required to use Red Guard as our attacker, which is bad for two reasons. First of all, Red Guard has four curses in his deck, rather than the two cur than the one curse, actually, in Hatchet's deck. Um, so yeah, Hatchet's typically a better attacker on Modifier, but also dealing two damage to the Red Guard is obviously more costly than dealing two damage to Hatchet, since Red Guard's health matters a lot more, being a tank. Okay, so Red Guard's up. Um, oh, we don't have the fire. Oops. Uh, I forgot that. So we won't actually have the shield. I mean, that's kind of okay. We'll see. One, two, three to the door. 
It's a pretty long scenario. I think we've got to go fast. Okay, just two enemies in this room? Ha! <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. Swarming bonus, but you go after the Vermling. Um, okay, so how much movement do you have? Four, so you're always reaching us, and the Vermling has also four, so you're also always reaching us. Uh, it's a shame we don't have... This is just why... This is why every character in the game wants Boots of Striding. If we could just Boots here, it would obviously be worth it to go up and make our attack four here, but sadly we can't. Um... I'm not sure there's like really any reason to... All right, so typically what we would want to do here is just pull the enemies back towards us to fight them more easily with our allies. But because we have to go into the room to loot the chest anyway, someone's going to have to make this move. So, let's see. Plus boots, go to there. And then we can attack either of these with both attacks. Yeah, so it just makes sense to go further into the room. It's not going to reduce any number of attacks to go further back. It's not going to make it so our allies can more easily attack and someone has to go grab the chest. We might as well use all our movement when we can. Okay, and then we do nothing else. But that's okay, that leaves the light for the Gift of the Void. Okay, so Hound's up, has no swarming advantage, just makes an attack three here. Ooh, okay. Okay. Ow. A bit. And then the hatchet's up. So with the hatchet, we're going to do a move. I mean, I guess the advantage is, yeah. If we'd stopped here, we could have healed the Red Guard for one. Alright, that was a bit of a mistake then. I suppose. I mean, the heal... Now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that actually was. We shouldn't have gone as far. I forgot about this heal one. Alright, so we're going to use our boots here to move as much as possible. It's because we're in a long rest anyway. Soon enough. We go to there. Yeah, this would have been better. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. What a mistake. Okay. And then we're going to attack with repeat shot. It's an attack three, range three. I think we can just go ahead and throw the favorite on this attack. Yeah. Because then if we, because the next attack on the scout can be an attack five with advantage, so if we, if we get a plus one on that, we kill. So it just makes sense to throw the favorite here. Plus then we maybe get to long rest. Okay, so we're gonna throw the favorite at the hound. And this gives us an attack six. Please no curse. Okay, ah, there's the plus one. So this goes down to one life. And then the scout goes, goes here. He just attacks for two. Yeah. Okay. Ow. And the Void Warden goes, and we're going to use the bottom of Lure of the Void to do a default move too. Still definitely makes sense to attack here. Going to here, and then we're going to consume the light with Master Influence. We're going to create dark. We're going to poison this, hoping to get a plus one here, and the Hatchet's going to suffer two damage. So Hatchet gets an attack five with advantage, targeting this Rumbling Scout. Sorry, the favorite. I picked it up, but I did not place it here. Okay, so we just need a plus one on this. Okay, we got it. I would love to see the other curse there, but that's still okay. Gift of the Void is amazing. Alright, so there's just one enemy with one health left. It's a bit of an annoyance, isn't it? Okay. Well, we've got a lot to gain by long resting on both of these characters. I mean, here we refresh all these items and we heal. And here we refresh all these items. And in general... On, I mean, both of these items are actually very important. I mean, all right, eagle eye goggles are so, so important on Hatchet. Um, but since this is a infinite small enemy scenario, um, our AoE combo is going to be really important. And the more we do the AoE combo, the better the goggles get. And then weathered boots are just extremely important to always have on Hatchet. It's really, like, being able to transform your move one loot one into a move two loot one is a big difference. And helps enormously with making sure that you can always pick up the favorite. Uh, morning, Gripeway. Love the Mind Thief stream. How do you think it went? Uh, I think it went pretty well. People seem to be pretty receptive. We'll see how it goes this week with the uh, Red Guard. Ah, uh, not Red Guard. Um, with the uh, Lightning Bolt. One second. I think I didn't do a perfect job. Toward, I think I did better in the first half of the stream than the second half of the stream of always talking about stuff. But again, I felt kind of a time crunch at the end because I had a, a commitment. But this Thursday, I'll make sure not to have any commitments afterwards. I mean, well, I'm sort of going to have a commitment. Not really. Not a time-specific one, but obviously I can't take all the time in the world because the next day is my green card appointment. So I have some stuff that I'll have to do. I mean, I'll have to make sure I have everything in order the night before. But anyway, 
Okay, uh, so long rest here, long rest here. I think I've clicked each of those more than once. That's just to make sure. And then here we'll short rest. Well, to be clear, it's my green card appointment to to uh, hand, hand in, like, it's my appointment to apply for a green card. Not even my appointment to get my green card, to be clear. I basically, in June, I was given a, an appointment to set up an appointment, basically. But yes, thank you. Okay, uh, so yeah, basically we have a lot more to gain on the long rest here and here than we do here, so it certainly makes sense to do our short rest here and allow these two to long rest and try to kill this enemy ourselves. Mmm, that's a dagger. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely good. Hopefully, so basically, once I do that, I'll, I should be given a recipice, which would still technically, well, probably allow me to work here, although, given how it worked out, I mean... Realistically, so we came in, we moved here in back into into France in March, I think, and we found a place by April. And basically, our hope was that we would be able to, like, that I would be able to start working by the the beginning of the next school year, right? Which started in end of August, beginning of September. Obviously, here it's going to be a little bit different. Even for example, if I get my green card in probably like February, I guess is a realistic expe like, expectation at this point. It's not really going to be possible to be start to start working as a teacher in the middle of February. So no matter what, it's not really going to change the way this year goes for me at this point. But with COVID and everything anyway, it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, we're still we're able to support this, so uh, it'll be okay. But yeah, I mean, no matter what, it'll just be it'll be a relief to finally have it done because it's been really weird, sort of being in green card limbo for so long. <laughs> All right. Um. So I have to decide whether to to short rest here or not. I mean, sorry, to reroll here or not. Give and take is a really important card. I'm just afraid of losing. Basically, the only things I really don't want to lose here, I mean, I guess there's a lot of things I really don't want to lose in truth. I don't want to lose my big movement because I need a lot of movement to make it to the scenario. I've got a four and a three that I can't really lose. And I also don't want to lose basically Wicked Scratch, which is the way I'm killing this year. Yeah, ultimately, I think there's just too many things I could reroll into that would be worse than this. So I think we're just supposed to go like that. Oops. Okay, so now we need to go again before 19 and kill it, which basically means this. This is a shame because this top is actually decent for allowing our allies to move while we're going from room to room. But the healing legitimately seems even better here, I think. Maybe it's not. I guess if the red guard does a heal 4 on himself while we go while we run, and then we do a heal 2 plus... So what would it be? 4 would put to 7, then our heal 9, then long rest heal 11. Yeah, maybe we actually don't. Maybe we can just get away with playing this bottom here for initiative and save this. Because I legitimately, I think move, 2 movement is probably going to be more useful than 6 healing here, which is funny. So Taunting Fate for a bottom move 2, and this just is a gifted attack. Because we do need to gift an attack here to kill this. Again, 13 initiative, 15 initiative, it's all the same here. Um... The Hound can, I mean, he can muddle at 7, I don't really care, we should be fine against that, I mean, should be, I guess not really, I guess I kind of care, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, the 6 immobilize attack would be kind of annoying, that would be the worst thing here, but again, at 13 or 15, we beat the 19s and every other later initiative for them. Okay, 26. So, here we go, there's really no reason to add plus 1, or plus, yeah, plus 1 to this attack. Um, this has 1 life and the attack is for a million. So we gain one experience. We're going to consume the dark with Master Influence, but then recreate the dark. So this is an attack five with advantage, targeting the Hound, gifted to the Red Guard. Get rid of a curse. Ah, damn. All right. So the favorite drops there. So we're going to have to go pick that up, unfortunately. Uh, okay. And then I have just a default move to do with the bottom taunting fate. I think I'm going to go here. I don't know. This is kind of greedy because we don't have a ton of movement. But at the same time, I really want money. I don't know. There's a chance we fail this scenario for sure. But I, I just need money on the Void Warden so badly. And I have so few opportunities to pick it up. Also, I want to do something. Objects. Uh, components. Tools. Note card. Taunting.
I'm curious to see... Again, I, I actually think people overrate this card. Um, well, overrate the bottom of this card, basically. I mean, I understand they're like, yeah, but if you have ice. So I'm curious to see how often we actually use it. Admittedly, we don't have the access to ice that people would claim that we would have, or that they would have if they could get, I mean, to plan around this card. But I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, still, it'll kind of have a similar impact of seeing, like, for example, here, the bottom of this card would not have changed anything in terms of the, like, we wouldn't, even if we had access to ice here, we wouldn't have wanted to use this bottom. Okay. Long rests. Okay, okay. So someone needs to go get that chest. First we need to choose cards to lose. Alright, um, I'm going to get rid of my Wind Spender. I definitely need to keep all my movement cards, and I definitely want to keep my AoE combo. That choice is pretty simple. As for here, yeah, it's just got to be this. I know this will be good against the Shaman at some point, but who knows how soon we'll be facing the Shaman. I'm pretty sure, again, not looking here. The only room that's going to have Shaman in it is this one, so. Alright. Uh, so accordingly, I mean, Hatchet has to make it to here, or has to move here into a loot one. I guess technically that does use less movement, and movement is really going to be the determining factor in our ability to beat the scenario. I'm going to keep my AoE combo. Actually, if the next room has similar to what this had, then the AoE combo is probably not going to be very good. So let's just play a piece of the AoE combo here. So we'll just use boots to here and do a loot, because we obviously have to pick up the favorite. The scenario is going to be really hard with this party, actually. I mean, just with Jaws characters. It just requires so much movement and longevity. Okay, so Redguard has more movement than the Void Warden, so it should be Redguard who goes to get that. Ah, I guess that's the thing. We're not going to get to do this top heal. Bless you. Hmm. But here we just have a move four and a move three at this point, so we also can't. No matter what. All right. Let's do some healing here and some moving. So we can do one, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, we can move as much as possible here. Oops, I have to go all the way down there. I don't think there's any reason not to. And as for us, we're going to do this move to begin with. And we're set with this card. I don't know, it's theoretically a ranged attack, but it's also kind of just like one of my least useful cards. Okay. <sighs> so red guard goes first. We do a move three, we create light, this doesn't really matter. And we get this. There we go. All right. And then the Void Warden goes, we're gonna do a top heal two on the Red Guard, also on ourself, doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna do a move four on bottom. To here. And Hatchet's gonna go, we're gonna do a move one, loot one, plus use our boots to get two. One, two to here, grab all this. Favorite back. Okay. And we're just going to keep moving. Doesn't really change which turn we use the big movement on. Oh, I guess. If we do this this turn, we can gift the red guard some movement. So that's not bad. I'm just going to play the worst of the two shield abilities here. Again, we just have to keep playing things. I guess I could just play this. I'm never going to set up the two elements to use this, so who really cares? The shield abilities are theoretically better for entering the room in the follow-up turn, I guess. I don't know, it's pretty close. So the move four from the red guard, we go one, two, three, four. Uh, but gifting the red guard two movement with where we are is not good. So what if the red guard does a move three this turn instead and saves the move four? And then we're not getting the healing. Just kind of counted on getting, but it, at this point, I really think movement is going to be more important than healing. I think we'll survive with our health, especially because we're going to be long resting a lot. So there's just no real cost to that. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and this is range three, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. So one, two, three, and then we give the red guard two movement to here, and then we go one, two, three to there. So 
then we can actually move and heal the red guard and just pitch a card that we don't really care about here, which is this. And we need to go after the red guard goes. Yep, which works just fine. After the red guard and void warden go, but this also works fine. Okay. Oops. Now we know there's a zero on the bottom of the deck. Not a big deal. It's if it were something more significant being on the bottom there, I would just reshuffle because of accidentally giving myself that information. Knowing that I'm not going to draw zero has literally essentially no impact. Okay, so we're going to move three here. One, two, three to there. And nothing else. Then the Void Warden goes. We're going to gift the Red Guard to movement. And we're going to do a move three ourselves, a suggestion. This is sort of a, like, this is one of the base movement scenarios that's not very well designed for a three player party. Because sort of what you're supposed to do in this scenario is you're supposed to split up, right? You're supposed to send two people this way, two people this way each time. But in a three player party, this just doesn't really work. <laughs> so. Because you don't know which way you could send. I mean, and actually, they're just evenly balanced, I think, in a three-player party anyway. So, yeah. Basically, it's just it's a really, really difficult scenario for a three-player party due to not being really that well thought out. All right. So, we're going to do a move three. One, two, three. Create Earth and heal the Red Guard for one. Okay. So... We can make it to the door. We have an invis cloak, but I'm not sure we really want to make it to the door. Or at least not first. Can we make it there with a move four and some shielding? No. Also, we'd want the spot the Void Warden's in. Uh, and us, we just have two move threes here. Actually, I guess we have a move three and then a move four, actually, if we create the wind first. But then the Red Guard can't have this spot. So accordingly, I guess we just don't go in next turn. We'll just move. What card do I care most about? Ultimately, I don't really care about any of these cards. I guess I care about that one slightly the most, which is funny to say because these cards are all excellent. But again, just nothing matters in this scenario except movement and movement and movement and movement. So, all right. So if we're going to do this next turn. I guess if we create fire this turn. Yeah, then we can do these two things next turn. OK, sure. So Red Guard goes here, Void Warden moves to like here, Hatchet can move to there, create wind, and then have a move four the following turn. Not that that move four is really going to matter. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll just keep center mass just for initiative at this point, because it's never going to be a follow-up shot anyway. Oh, so we need where Void Warden is, so we go like this. So we do a move two with this, and we just create fire on top here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're going to beat this scenario, actually. I guess we're going to have to, we really should have split up. It's just, well, first of all, I didn't remember how small the room, I mean, like how few enemies would be in the rooms. Theoretically, one character could have probably beat, I don't know, at plus two, though, it's hard for one character to beat two normal enemies like that. They just hit so hard, we do so little damage. I guess Hatchet, I don't even know. I'm not sure. Just a three-player party. Again, if we were in a four-player party, this would be easy. If we were in a two-player party, I mean, not easy. It would be much more reasonable. It just seems like playing on this difficulty level with vo with Jaws Lion characters who have limited movement and playing in a three-player party, it seems like it's going to be just almost impossible to beat the scenario. I feel like, again, if we just had to loot all the chests in the last rooms, this would be one thing. But to be clear, we're barely a third of the way through the scenario at this point, yet we're definitely more than a third of the way through our longevity. I guess playing the persistent losses. I don't know. Our classes don't function without the persistent losses. I mean, this one, yeah, we could do without, but not these. Not the way we built this one, at least. I don't know. This just—it's kind of miserable, to be honest. All right, well, let's go here. I think it's better than going there. Hatchet doesn't move three. To here creates wind. And it's kind of my fault, I guess, for start for choosing this scenario. I've honestly just forgotten how how it was designed, sort of. I didn't. I mean, I don't really look ahead when I choose scenarios for the day. Well, we'll be on back-to-back -back losses. Um, is there any real reason to long rest? Is there any reason to short rest? Yeah, we should probably short rest. It allows us to contribute to the fight immediately. We don't get an, an extra turn in a meaningful way here, since it's not a turn which we're going to be moving. Yeah, I'm sure that's great. Again, I just can't lose cards that have movement on them. This is also not very good 
because like this sort of design well the way this works out again for a three player party because as you've noticed, I don't really care about what's written on almost any of my cards unless they have the word move on them. And sure, it's fine for scenarios to be different, but this one is kind of like, I don't know. I don't feel like my choices for most of my characters for most of my turns actually matter from this point onward. Like in the beginning when fighting, sure, but the fighting was pretty easy and now it's just move from room to room to room to room to room. There's going to be slightly more serious fighting in this part and then we're going to be back to this. I mean, ultimately, I guess what we're going to have to do is probably go here fight this room go here fight this room and then have to split up depending on who has like the most cards left to go fight by themselves to clear out the two last rooms okay um yeah so we're playing these cards we don't really have anything else to do as far as the void warden goes <laughs> what and then the hatch is not even getting a move for here because it's not going to work as red guards gonna be on the door that's hilarious all that for that um I mean, just gifting an attack, I guess. I guess I really actually should... I, again, I, I kind of forgot about how much movement was necessary. I really should have just bought Black Boon, because that's essentially a move four, the bottom. And I should have brought my Dark Consuming move three plus two, since movement is all that matters. Okay. Uh, I don't know how likely I am to need healing. I do want to make an attack, so I think I'll just do this to throw this card away here. I guess at the same time, while I'm moving from room to room... Things other than healing don't matter. Yeah, I'm not really going to play bottoms, which aren't moves, so non-move bottoms are pretty useless. Let's just go with this. Okay, so red guard goes. We're going to do move four. We're going to consume the fire. We're going to gain an experience and gain shield four. We're going to open the door. Ah, yeah. Okay. And we flip. Please melee. I think it's unlikely. Yeah. Well, I guess that is melee. Mm, okay. Now you still make it to us? Sure. And I'm going to do the top, where I create light, and I give myself an additional shield. So here I have two shield. Alright, so then the hatchet goes, and we consume the wind, which gives us a move two, and then another move two. So we go to here, and then to here, so really just a move three in the end. And I guess it's coming up to here, so there's very little cost to using the favorite. This one is not, though, so I should definitely not use the favorite on that thing. Okay, so let's just attack hound number six here, throwing the favorite, so we'll make an attack three plus three. All right. And the favorite is in him. I'll drop it where he dies. Does die, he shall. Uh, okay, well, in the end, we have nothing to hit. This, I mean, normally this initiative should be late enough that we should have been good. I mean, I guess I should have done it backwards, but it wouldn't change anything. Uh, okay, so accordingly, I'm just going to gain one experience, create dark, gift an attack to someone who can't perform it, and I'm going to do a move two this way to go open this door to start drawing these things down towards us. Okay, so this hound goes here, attacks the red guard, attacks at plus one, so an attack four. All right, well, we are required to use this. I guess we're going to long, we can just long rest here. There's no real reason not to, so sure. Let's just use this to not take any damage. Okay, so that's dead, and the scout does nothing. And that's the end of the round. No, oh, sorry, and the favorite drops where the hound dies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here... Um, hmm. So we're just going to long rest on both of them. Again, just to refresh our items, heal a bit. It doesn't cost us anything. Tempo doesn't really matter in this scenario, only longevity and movement. Alright, so what if we go... Yeah, that, that works pretty well. So I'm going to open one, two, three, four, because I probably want to move further away from the things in there so that I don't get hit by them. So we do this and this, and I'll explain why. Basically, by doing that, then we can gift two movement to the hatchet, who then, that allows hatchet, or I mean, to either one of these. By gifting movement to the hatchet, going to there, we can then go here with retrieval and get the chest, while only needing to use a move one to do it. And after that, it will be, what, move two to here, and then after that, we can do, like, move three, move three. Yeah, I think that generally lines up with what we have left on the hatchet. And it'll mitigate a little bit of the damage here. Okay. 
So we do move four. I'm not going to gain the experience here. I actually want the extra movement to be safe. So I'm going to move one onto the door here. Sure. Uh, so we've already drawn. Oh, the scouts just re reflipped into that, huh? That's not really what I want. I kind of wanted them to move, but that's okay. The hound will move. One, two, three. Do I need to go quite so far back? I mean, the enemies are going to come down pretty far. I think it's fine. It's probably safer. So I'm going to go to there. And then I'm going to gift a move two and a shield one to the hatchet going to here, which doesn't actually do anything. But I mean, the shield doesn't do anything, but the move does. Because again, retrieval will now get the chest. Okay. So now the hounds go. They have five movement, I think. Yes. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Roaming scouts don't move, and our two allies take long rests. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, time to get rid of this. Well, I theoretically can set it up. I can't get rid of movement, and I don't want to get rid of my shields. Okay, so I still want my AoE combo, but I also don't want to get rid of my move 3. So I guess AoE combo it is. I mean, yeah, theoretically this is a scenario where it's great, but it just doesn't matter as much as movement. So, there we go. Damage is not significant here. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to attack this and then move here with retrieval. Obviously our attack here is sort of not going to be impressive, but eh, it's fine. We'll just kill this over the course of two turns. Is the plan without using the favorite on it. Otherwise, I guess... We could use Gift of the Void ourselves to finish this off. I mean, Hatch has nothing to do but attack that, though. I don't know what we have to do, though. Except do this anyway, and also just run away from those hounds. Um, so I guess I, I really do want to go at 13 here, right? So I'll save this and do something like this. Because I really don't want to let the hounds get to me at 19. Okay, and so what is the Red Guard doing? I mean, I guess the Red Guard can actually just go into the door. You don't have any elements, so you don't have any good shielding set up. Mm -hmm. With the move two, yeah, we couldn't pull anything. So I guess I'll just use this one then. Since I won't be able to get the direct damage from this top, and we'll just go for a two shield turn. While moving over to here. Mm, okay. Uh, Pierce. That's annoying. Oh well. Not a lot we can do about it now. So we're going to do a move. I mean, I guess I could just not let them hit me. The problem is, alright, they have three movement. One, two, three. I mean, one will hit me. Normally, un under a normal scenario, I would just not move in a way that these enemies could hit me here. But I just can't afford not to keep moving towards the end of the scenario in this scenario, so I just have to do it. So I'm just going to do this and this. I'm going to move to here with a two, give myself one shield. Give myself another shield, create light. Okay, so now the Void Warden goes. So we have to get off this coin, but we can at least get the coin. And then the Hatchet can pick up the Hatchet or the Favorite later. So, sure. So let's do a default move 2 with the bottom Taunting Fate. Going to here. That's the other mode. Um, do I want to use the light? I guess I don't really need to. I guess I do, actually, because I have a bunch of curses. No, it's always advantage. It's just plus one attack, but you consume the light. That should be fine, then, because this should definitely die between our... Assuming there are no misses, it should die. And the only way the plus one changes anything is if 
the hatchet misses, and we would get a plus one with our advantage attack, and I think the combination of these things is quite unlikely. And the light actually does give one shield next turn to the red guard. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to do... I give a great dark, and poison the scout, and cause the hatchet to lose two life, and get to make an attack four with advantage on the scout. All right, well... I think we killed it. I think it's dead. Shame to see our blesses go out like that. There we go. Okay. And we're done. So then the hatchet goes, and we're just going to do a move. Oh, we played a move three to do this attack. Uh, it's fine, actually, because we still have three, three, and four. All right. So we do a move one, loot one here. Doesn't want to let us loot this, huh? Alright, if I just put myself on top of it to end my turn, it will. There we go. Boom. I guess otherwise, I'm just supposed to pick it up or something. Yeah, I guess clicking on it didn't make any sense. Alright, um, yeah, so the question now is should we use a stamina potion? It's weird, I can concentrate on work okay today, and my neck tension is magically gone. What if I do with me? I'm glad to hear it. And I have no idea what could have caused that that market change. Uh, so we, we always have to move to there, or we have to do retrieval with our boots. We could just get back retrieval with our boots. This sort of sucks, though. I mean, I guess... Is that worse than just doing a move two and finishing on it? It's probably not too big of a difference. I mean, a move three, even. We could just do this next turn and then have this afterwards. <laughs> I guess there's no reason probably to stay on a potion right now. Will we have enough attacks if we do that? Yeah, we've got like these two as attacks. This is fine. This is fine for now. Okay. So the scouts are still magically not moving, which is incredible. But I mean, whatever, this doesn't change too much. So this goes like this, this goes to here. So this is going to attack into the red guard. Um, it has pierce too, so our shield doesn't actually matter defensively, but it still deals its damage. So attack at minus one, so attack for three. I guess, so attack for two. We actually can. So it has pierce too, but we can actually just negate all of this. There's no real reason not to, I think. So we'll block all the damage then, because it pierces our two initial shield, but then we get two additional shield here, and this does four retaliate. Not bad. I'm just going to quickly blow my nose, sorry. Okay, back. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. So what now? We have dark. We can give it a curse and do a little bit of healing. I guess that's what we're doing here. Certainly not playing any losses. Um, so else we have light. So this top looks pretty good. I don't really want to do this bottom. I can't create fire to make this better except by doing this. Hmm. Oh, that's tough, actually, then. Oh, you know. Hmm. I mean, we could do it like this, then. And then next turn, we could do a full two shield. But at the same time, next turn, there's going to be less enemies. We can't pull this one to us anyway, because this one's here. So it doesn't quite work very well. The annoyance here is that basically... Like, this turn, the light can give us a shield, but then we don't really have a good bottom to pair it with. I mean, we can do something fine on bottom, obviously. But then, after that, we never use the fire for something. I mean, I guess we'll use the fire for something the falling rest cycle, so that's probably okay. So, I guess the other downside is by doing this, we actually have to attack. But, honestly, attacking is fine. Our health matters, I think, less than just tempo of going through these enemies while we are fighting them. Because we just can't waste turns here. Accordingly... Disadvantage on all the attacks to put ourselves in a better position, or just one direct damage. Probably just one direct damage. Uh, at the same time, if we put ourselves in a good position this turn, then next turn we have this combo, which is probably a bit better. So yeah, actually, let's go with the disadvantage here. Okay, so then Hatchet, like I said, has to actually move onto here. Which means the only way we can attack is with a range 4, so that's got to be that. That means the wind generation doesn't really matter, but it actually can, because we can actually stamina push in this back. And then we'll have a move three and a move two, I guess with an attack and one top not doing anything. We'll see. Otherwise, I could just not do the wind generation here. I could just do this then, since this is only a move two. But then if I'm stamina pushing, it doesn't really matter, does it? 
No, it really doesn't. Since if I'm always stamina pushing a card back, I can get back any card I want. So this still makes more sense. I think. I mean, I guess the argument is the move forward next turn isn't going to be very useful, because we're still going to be stuck here fighting for a turn or two. But we do need to attack with follow through, so I guess there's no real reason not to just do this to move. Okay. This works. I think we're good. Okay, Hounds of 26. The Vermlings are finally moving. They're doing just their standard attack. Sure. Okay, so Red Guard's up first. I mean, standard range attack, but yeah. Mm, so let's see. The movement on these. They have three movement, three range on the Elite. So he does reach us here. And this is one, two, three. Actually, that's two. Um... So this one's basically always hitting us, assuming we're actually hitting a Hound, and the other one's never hitting us, so there's no real reason not to move up, I suppose. Uh, I guess the reason would be to be in range for the heal from the Void Warden, but if we're there, we're still actually in range, right? Yeah, we are. I don't really care if I have to go next to one of them with the Void Warden. It's not that big of a deal. I also just want to move as much as possible when I can. So with the Red Guard, I'm just going to do a move three to here. One, two, three. At the bottom of this, all attacks targeting me gain disadvantage this round. And I'm going to use the top of Shocking Advance. I'm going to consume the Light gain one experience, and I'm going to make an attack three immobilize, targeting... I mean, I guess the other argument is I could have moved away from him, so he doesn't even hit me. Hmm. But he immobilize, and go here instead? Actually, that's not bad. But then we don't... No, we can use our boots to still get the heal. Yeah, actually, alright, that makes sense. Even though I'm going to have one shield this round, I don't actually want to take an additional attack, so sure, that actually makes more sense. So sorry, first I'm going to make the attack. I forgot about the immobilize here. It doesn't come up that often, especially when you don't have access to the Jaws of Lion item. But, uh, yeah, it's actually fine here. Okay. Plus one. Nice. So we do four damage. Take two. And then we're going to do one, two, three to here. You tried to consume ice. Oh, did I? Oops. To be fair, the ice and the light look similar sometimes. Good catch, Lune. Et bonjour. Okay, so that immobilized this one. So now we're going to do the bottom of Suggestion. We're going to consume the Dark. Fortunately, nothing looks like the Dark to give them a curse. Monster Curses are here. This is a move 3, plus we're going to use our boots to get a total of move 4 here. 1, 2, 3. F oh, no, 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 no. So we actually have to go here with the Red Guard then. That's fine. Yep. So I guess using our boots was unnecessary. Anyway, the movement was the last thing we did, so that's fine. Yep. This one will still come and attack the Red Guard, and yeah, it shouldn't change anything for you either. Actually, will make us out of range of that? Sure. Okay, why not? So then we heal the Red Guard for two. With the top of Close the Abyss. Okay, Hounds go. This one's immobilized. This one goes here or here. It's kind of my choice. I think I'd rather have it closer. Easier to attack with the Hatchet. And attacks the Red Guard. The attack is for plus zero, so it's an attack four on the Red Guard. We have one shield this turn, so it's an attack three. I'm really lucky with the flips. So we're going to take two damage, and he's going to get retaliated for one. All right, then the scouts go. Again, three movement, three range on you. Uh, sure, why not? Two movement, two range. And then the hatchet goes. So we're going to do a move to default with the bottom of fancy hat going to here we won't have the favorite yet though but i'm just grabbing it for now just a shortcut and then i'm gonna do an attack to range four one two three four targeting hound number two um is it worth it using the goggles here it's pretty valuable if i get a kill in the sound here it's not like i'm going to be doing multi-target attacks i am going to be doing more valuable attacks after this with bigger bigger numbers but at the same time we don't really have a better solution for killing this next turn I guess, no. Next turn, actually, I can pull it and do a bunch of direct damage to it. So, yeah, actually, never mind. Uh, accordingly, no, but I, I still do actually need to deal at least one damage to it with this attack. So if we kill it, it's okay, but if we don't kill it, it's also okay. So let's just not use the goggles here. Okay, so we're going to do attack two on hound number two. Sure. And we're done. I mean, obviously, we only get punished by this, again, if they go specifically at six initiative and do their immobilizing attacks, because then I would have preferred to kill one. All right, um, so now we just need to move up. I guess we can create wind and attack with this, actually. And then we stamina push and back follow through to have a move four. And we can use repeat shot to hit the one we put the favorite in here. Yep, that works. 
and Void Warden, I'm just going to take a long rest. Just going to chill. There's not really anything to do. Oh, no! Oh, it happened! Oh, that's so bad. That is so very bad. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right, so we have no sources of mitigation here whatsoever. So we take seven, and we're mobilized. <sighs> Again, the problem is just that, I, like, I understand that this could have happened, and I knew it was a possibility, but we're so far from being in a good spot to beat the scenario. I mean, we're so far from beating the scenario currently, and that, to be clear, that's with nothing going wrong, which is just sort of an indication of why this scenario is just not going to work for these characters. I don't know. In a three-player party. Um, but yeah, so I just don't think I had the luxury to play around things like this. I basically, since I'm really far from having a chance of winning anyway, I sort of just need everything to go right for me. I don't have leeway to play around things like this. So it's really unfortunate that it happens, but I don't think it was correct to play around it. All right, well, I'm definitely using my healing potion here. Uh, oh, no. Oh, this is from bad to worse. Healing myself for three. And then I'm going to do the bottom and top. Um, we create fire, and we create light. Why is this scenario complicated for your team composition? All right, so it's because this scenario, there's two things about it. So this scenario is sort of designed to be a what we call a split-up scenario, which is basically, so every one of these rooms has a chest in it. And the scenario goal for this room is you have to kill all enemies and loot all chests. So basically, you actually, like, Normally, a scenario like this, if it was just kill enemies, what you could do is you could just like open doors and then like kind of open doors and run back to the center of the side room and then just fight in the center as a group. But because you have to go get the chests in each room, in a normal party, this scenario is basically designed with a four-player party in mind. And this is sort of a problem that comes up relatively frequently in Gloomhaven is that it seems like a lot of stuff was tested mostly for four with four-player parties um, in mind, or mostly by four-player parties. And there wasn't a lot of consideration given to three or two player parties many times. So so basically, in a four player party, how you're supposed to approach this scenario is you're supposed to split off into two groups. You're supposed to have two people go to the left rooms and two people go to the right rooms. And so you sort of like, the first room is sort of a hard fight, and then you go here and here, and it's sort of easy fights because it's designed around having two people fight as well. Scenario 52 is well designed for two and three player parties. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what 52 is, but anyway. I mean, that's not to say that there aren't. Like, there certainly can be, but I'm just saying that this is an example of one that's not. So you have two people go this way and two people go this way, and you fight here and fight here, and then you come back together, and then you have, like, a hard fight again together, and then you have two people go this way and two people go this way, and you clear these rooms, and then you have a hard fight here again together. That's how this scenario is supposed to work. Um, in... A two-player party, theoretically, this works as well, because you have one person go this way, one person go this way, and then it should also be balanced around that. The problem is there's nothing for three players to make this work. So normally, split-up scenarios in Gloomhaven, when it's a three-player party, actually still are fine. Um, it's difficult to give an example, but basically, I mean, a concrete example, but for example, there's like a scenario where you have, there's like two different paths at the end of the scenario that you have to go down. And in order to beat, the, well, in order to beat the scenario, you have to open the last room. But it tells you before you get to the section where there's two paths you split, that there's like two pressure plates in the top and one pressure plate in the bottom. And so accordingly, the scenario basically signposts for you um, which way the two people should go in a three player party and which way the one person should go. And accordingly, also, the monsters in those two directions are scaled appropriately for two people to fight the monsters up here and one person to fight the monster down here. So that works as well. The problem here is there was no way to really signpost that you should have like two people go to the left and one person go to the right, right? So instead of balancing it like those scenarios where you where it's designed around having two people on one side and one person on the other side, it's actually just designed sort of in between where both sides are a little bit too hard for for one person and too easy for three people or even really a bit too easy for two people. So basically with a three player party there's not I mean, again, obviously there are parties, like, if you have someone like Note, sorry, not Note, um, like uh, Bolt or Mind Thief or something like that, there are certainly some characters who could easily go to one of these sides and just sort of, you know. But actually, no one in our party is really that. Uh, the Void Warden certainly can't solo like that. The Red Guard, the way we've built him, at least, can't really do that either because we've gone for Shield Spikes build. So we sort of mitigate and deal a little bit of AoE damage. We can't kill single targets very quickly. The other Red Guard build actually would have been fine, probably, for this. Would have been our one who solos off. And Hatchet can do good single target damage, but struggles a little bit to go into a room by himself, right? 
because what's going to happen is you're going to attack something with a favorite, and you're kind of just going to have to keep kiting backwards to not have disadvantage and not to get retaliated. But the problem with kiting backwards in these rooms is typically this would work if you just had to kill the enemies, but because you have to make it to the chest, it doesn't really work very well. Basically, you go in with Hatchet, you make an attack, probably don't kill, um, and then the two enemies rush up on you, and so then, like, you, I mean, you can kind of try to get past them, but again, with move three, you can't do that very easily. Hatchet would still be the best bet, and that's probably almost certainly what we're going to have to do for these last two rooms. But basically, yeah. So, long story short, in a three-player party, we're sort of required to go into, at least with this party, we're sort of required to go into every room as three, and this just essentially doubles the amount of movement required to get through this scenario, since we have to go like this, then like this, then like this, then like this, then like this, theoretically. Although, again, for this part, we are going to do instead this, and then try to split for the sides. Um... And so, to begin with in Gloomhaven, this is already not very good design, for three players specifically, but it's even worse if we consider Jaws Lion characters, because Jaws Lion characters on average have significantly less movement than an average Gloomhaven character, and this is for a very obvious reason, which is that in Jaws the Lion, the scenarios were much smaller because they were just written on the scenario book rather than being set up with all these map tiles you would basically never have this large of a scenario in Jaws the Lion, ever. So accordingly, characters didn't need to have this much movement. Additionally, this is also base Gloomhaven, which is designed around every party having two pairs of Boots of Striding, but we're playing with Nerf Boots of Striding. So ultimately, it's harder for a three-player party than it should be, and we have a lot less movement than a normal Gloomhaven party would have. So the combination of these two things essentially leads itself to the scenario being impossible for us to complete. Probably not impossible, but very 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 difficult and accordingly since it's very 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 difficult we can't really play around bad stuff happening to us because when you're again the, the less likely you are to beat a scenario the more you have to just rely on getting lucky okay so we go we do this first and i mean the order doesn't really matter we do two damage to everything near us so this dies this takes two um and we get to loot this coin Okay. Hatchet's up next. So we're going to do the top of power pitch. Or sorry, the bottom of power pitch. Definitely not the top. Um, if we do that, we get attacked by the scouts. I guess I don't really want that. Since at least the red guard does have uh, one shield this turn. And we're going to heal the red guard a little bit too. So we're just going to go there, create wind. And then we're going to do an attack two, range three, targeting the hound here. We are going to throw the favorite here. Uh, and then it's going to be healed too on the red guard afterwards. Um, I think this is important enough I am going to use the goggles for this. So let's do it, especially because I'm going to long rest soon anyway. I'm going to stand on potion after this though. Oof, good goggles. Okay, so we do 5 damage, and we heal the red guard for 2. And here, because I have an odd hand size, I'm going to stand on potion because this will give me an extra turn. What do I want back? So I want to attack with this. And in reality, I just want to go really fast next turn to kill this before it goes, so my allies can both long rest. I don't know if we have any, even can long rest. That's just going to be... Or red guards. Oh no, we're long resting here. Yeah, okay. Okay, um... So I, yeah, I just need my fastest initiative here. I know I need movement, but right now I'm actually in a really dangerous spot because of what happened, so I can't be greedy for movement anymore. Okay, so minus two movement. I'm sure this is never reaching. This is certainly reaching and is hitting the red guard. Okay, so this attacks for four, applies poison. We have one shield this round, and we have nothing additional. So we take three, and we're poisoned. No, we're no longer immobilized, by the way. Okay. We get a long rest here. I certainly need my healing. Again, I just don't really care about non-move bottoms at this point, so let's get rid of that. Even though, technically, they're actually decent right now, I don't... I mean, maybe there's something else I could get rid of here instead, then? I definitely want both the heals still. This is my best attack, this gives movement, this is my big move, and this is my second best attack. No, I think that's what I want to get rid of. Alright, so we're going to kill the Hound. And then use our boots, or not even use our boots, we're just going to walk onto the favorite. 
Okay, so then what are we going to do? I mean, I guess right now we don't need to do the healing. At the same time, if we do the healing now, the advantage is that we remove the poison and give a bless. But there's also still these things to kill. Eh, the healing now is actually not bad. Let's just go ahead and do this while we have a chance to here. And do what else? Probably just like throw no, but this is also big healing. I mean, I kind of want all my cards. That's the problem. I mean, I guess I can just do a move three and go to there right now. And I'll be the tank. I can theoretically go invis if I need to. Who knows? Yeah, let's just do a move three and the two target heal. The two target heal definitely makes sense here. To remove the poison for a bit more profit. All right, well, that's fine. So the Hound goes, he muddles both uh, us and the Red Guard. Fortunately, this doesn't matter in the slightest. Sorry, the favorite is in the Hound right now, by the way. Um, so I'm going to attack the Hound with repeat shot. Okay. So this is six. Hound's dead. And I'm going to do a default move two with the bottom of Fancy Hat. And I'm going to go to here. Which gives me this and this. All right, and the Void Warden goes. These are just move jumping, looting. Yep, great. So I'm going to do a two target heal two. I'm going to heal the hatchet for two. Not that, that really matters here. And I'm going to heal you for two, which removes the poison and gives you a bless. And then I'm going to use the bottom of suggestion just to do a move three. See here. Okay, scouts go. One, two, three, four movement, I believe. It's plus one, and they have three base. Yep, and the red guard gets the long rest. All right, well, we survived being put to one, for the time being, at least. Yeah, so from here, we have, for example, on the red guard, we're going down to six cards, which means we have three, four, five, six, seven, we have nine turns left. In nine turns, we need to somehow finish these enemies, move all the way to here, and still do all three of these rooms. I think this just kind of demonstrates the extent to which the scenario is not at all possible here. That's a shame. Man, back-to-back -back losses. That's rough. And here, I mean, that turn was kind of unlucky for us, but thus far we've actually gotten pretty lucky. And we haven't really made bad decisions either, I think, overall. Like, maybe one or two small ones or something like that. But So, yeah, I think this is this should kind of demonstrate that, well, I mean, this can happen. Basically, I don't think that there was, I don't think there was, like, the last scenario we lost, when we lost 10 at the end of last week, or on Friday, basically, uh, there were a lot of things that could have gone differently, and I think we should have, I think, if we repeated that scenario 100 times, we would probably win maybe around at least 70 of 100 times. Here, I think if we repeated the scenario 100 times, we would win maybe 5? 10? I don't know. I mean, I guess we should, we just, now that I see how this has worked out with us clearing the rooms together, I know that we we still, even though we're a three-player party, had to just try to send Hatchet by himself to do one room while the other two did the other room. I mean, I realize that now, so I guess if we'd taken that approach, that would have given us a better chance of winning, but that would have been tough. Hatchet fighting two enemies that hit for three and three, or three and five, respectively, like, especially with the possibility of the immobilized and stuff like that, I don't know. There just, it just seems like there's so much that could have gone wrong there. But, ultimately, this just doesn't work, this approach, so. Okay, long rest on Hatchet. I mean, actually, do I even really need the long rest? It doesn't give me my boots back, it just gives me the goggles back. No, it's not. I mean, this is a move three, but we've got a number of move threes at this point. All right, we've got move three, move three, and since we still have this, this is still move four. So, yeah, we've got enough movement. We have enough movement. Okay. Um. Longer model either. Go as early as possible and gift an attack. I think. So for us on the red guard, we kind of just want to attack here, don't we? And no elements to do anything special while we attack. If we 
we go there, we can attack two, both of them. The front one will be disadvantage. That's probably fine. Just create light, something like this. And that's for us. I guess we'll just also, I mean, just kind of all going early here. Definitely want to save our move three, so let's just attack with this then. I don't know who will attack exactly, but we'll figure it out. Again, damage, it's kind of sad too, because sort of like the on these combat rounds, just don't even have to really think about combat. All right, they're doing that. Uh, so Hatchet's up first. We're going to add plus one to all our attacks this round, and we're going to attack the Elite, throwing the favorite. Yeah, nothing else to it. Okay. Zoom down to one. And the favorite is there. All right, then the Void Warden's up. Uh, yeah, well, the bottom actually does make a difference here, so in all fairness. So we're going to gift, we're going to do the bottom. I mean, oh my god, is this, is this how we lose the scenario? Again, all right, I guess this is sort of unfair to count this for a bottom here. To be honest, under normal circumstances, what I would do here is I would use this bottom as a move too, not as this. Because to be clear, if we don't kill them here, we're taking uh, attack attack eight poison, attack seven poison, or no, attack eight poison, attack eight poison, which both are lethal. And we have four curses in the red guard stack, so this is actually just a terrible idea. To be clear, no, 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 let's let's not use the bottom. Actually, I'm not. I mean, I am probably never winning this scenario, but. That's definitely just a way to lose the star for no reason. <laughs> that would just be really dumb. All right, so let's just start by gifting an attack with Wicked Scratch. I mean, it's significant at the bottom here because it adds... Oh, I guess we don't even have an element to consume, actually, so no. It would just mean that a plus one would kill here. But at this point, I think it's just better to count on the red guards to attack two's killing anyway. So we're going to gift an attack with Hatchet to here. It's with advantage. All right, well, wouldn't have mattered anyway. Happy with my decision. Um... All right, I am going to move here and grab this. I know that there's a very real possibility the red guard doesn't kill, but the thing is, I don't think I'm beating this scenario. So I would rather get money, in truth, because I don't think it's possible to win. Obviously, if I thought I had a high degree of certainty of winning, a high degree of probability of winning, I would just move to here so that even if we somehow fail to kill here, I would not get hit by this attack six poison. But I would rather just get money every chance I can, especially on the Void Warden, who really needs it. Oops, sorry, then the Red Guard's up. We're going to do the bottom of this. In the end, we don't need this top, so we'll do this bottom here, just to move two here. And then we're going to attack three on the Scout. Yep, 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 yep. Because what we could have done instead was... We moved away on the Void Warden, and then us, we just used a range attack, and then no one would get hit by him. But again, we just don't have that luxury here. All right, yep, there's the curse. Scouts immobilized, that doesn't really matter. All right, now the Scout attacks for six on Poison on the Void Warden. Five. Okay. So, the favorite is in him. So we have to get that no matter what. Huh? So I guess we'll just attack with follow through and use this as default move too. God, the initiative sucks though. I guess we don't need to do that because we have a move three either way. So let's do better initiative. And we'll still just attack with follow through because this is an attack four. And gives one experience. Okay, so us, we're going to gift someone movement, and we're going to move as much as we can. We need to wait for that thing to die, so we want to go at 26. Sure. And so then the red guard also just move as much as we can, and I guess heal ourselves now, because how we won't have another move three, but we're going to be so far ahead of everyone, and we do really need the healing here, so I think this is fine. 
We'll basically be missing out on one movement, but we'll be gaining four healing. All right. Let's go. So hatchets up. We gain one experience. We make an attack four range four targeting the Vermling. Sure, he's dead. There it goes there. And then we just do the bottom center mass as a move three, but really just a move two going to there. Now I get the favorite back. Okay. Void Warden's up. We're going to do the bottom of Resign Frenzy as a move four. We're certainly not going to gain experience here. Even though I think I'm likely to lose, I'd still like to try to win. And then I'm going to gift a move two with the top of Signs of the Void to you. One experience is basically not worth it to me. The coin was worth it because I really want money on the Void Warden. One experience is not that worth, not that big of a deal, and I'd rather try to play to win than get the one experience. Okay, we do a move four. We gain one experience. We heal ourselves for four. One, two, three, four to there. Okay. So, oh. Uh, now we wouldn't have been able to gift the movement if we had used our boots, huh? Would that be worth it, though? Because, I mean, it's all open information after the hatchet attack, so we could have gotten away with that. Uh, if we go here... Hmm. In that case, it would have been better to have the Red Guard go after us. That nah, wasn't possible. Okay. Uh, I mean, with different cards, maybe. But... Hmm. So basically, is it worth having one more movement on the Void Warden and two less movement on the Hatchet? I think the answer is no. I think Hatchet is actually our most movement-restricted character, especially since we often have to pick up the favorite. Okay. So here we long rest. Here we just keep moving. And similarly, here we keep moving. Is there any reason to create an element? Not really, because we're always going to long rest the following turn. I guess I'd like to keep that card the most, so let's play these two. Okay, red guard's up. We move. Hatchet's up. We move and create wind. Doesn't really matter, because I'm just going to long rest next turn, and Void Warden takes a long rest. And we heal off the poison with heal here. Yeah, it's time to get rid of this. We need to keep our movements. I'd rather keep the big heal with good initiative. Um, okay, so long rest, long rest. I think we'll keep the move four. Move three should be enough just to get to the other side of them. One, two, three to there. I guess being close to the door is actually not bad. So let's do move four and let's probably just gift some movement to set up better. I mean, at the same time, we could gift movement next turn for shield on the red guard before he goes in. So we just do a heal here on ourself. So we'd heal us for five and give them a bless. Eh, so be it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And then we just have to go before the red guard at 15 next turn. Is that possible? Yeah, we could do like the 32. Ah, but the 32, it's not going to work then. Oops, no. Uh, no, we can't. Oh, yeah, 16 if we do that. Okay, yep, that works. That works, that works. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we do this. Oops. All right, so we do move forward with the bottom of Resign Frenzy. One, two, three, four to here. And we gain one experience, and we heal ourselves for six. And we shuffle Bless into their deck. Just giving Blesses everywhere. Again, this isn't too ghostly because we have an Iron Helmet on the Red Guard. Okay, long rest, long rest. Wait, hold on, did I? Did I forget to remove a card at some point when resting? Uh, 
wish I knew what round it was. Um, I think I have to have. And that's the only explanation here. Because I had also counted it, right? I had said that I had nine turns left, which would be when I have three cards, or six cards. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yeah, I just must have forgotten to remove a card at long rest. Uh, let's just get rid of one of these two. I mean, I think this, it has to be one of the last three. And none of these, these were all interchangeable at that point. And obviously, I'd rather keep this than one of these. Um, probably need to move three, so let's just get rid of the shielding card. Okay, so this would stay in our hand, and then we'd have to choose a card to lose from these five. Yeah, actually, I guess we would have played this last turn, so actually from these six. Yeah, I must have just been going through it too quickly. Okay, um... Yeah, probably this. At this point, I really just want to keep my big moves and shieldy cards. And this is also a shieldy card. This is a shieldy card, yeah. Okay. And then here, now I'll see a fancy hat. You're neither a movement nor an attack. Yeah, that's correct then. Yep. Across the board. So, 16, 15, top shield, create fire, set up bottom shield next turn. Good, good. Um, I guess we don't need to move, so we can just give up bottom strength in here. We still have a gifted attack with this. That's fine. At this point, doing a little bit of damage to an ally is not a big deal. As for us... Red guard will be one past the door, so we can move on to the door with a move three. It's going late, and just attacking with center mass, and then following up with one of these two. Yep, seems good. Okay, so we go first. We're going to strengthen targeting the hatchet. And we're going to give Red Guard two movement and one shield. So, like so. Okay, Red Guard goes. So, Red Guard is going to do a move two. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, realistically. Oh, is this. Does it think we're, like, on four characters or something like that? No, it can't. It definitely has to understand we're a three player party. Yeah, no, because those would be elites on the side. I mean, legitimately, we're probably just barely going to make it through this room. Not even be close to these two. All right, we have one more movement. Let's see what they're all up to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, range attacks. Brutal. Ah, oh, brutal. Um... I don't actually, Ooh. yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just going to take some attacks here. I don't really want to move back to here, because I actually, I'm going to have three retaliate this turn, so I really actually want them to hit me. I mean, I know that means I'm taking attack fours, but with three shield, that's kind of fine. I've also got all my shield items still. Did I also forget to heal when I long rested? I don't know. It's too late to worry about that now. I don't know why I'm at nine life. I feel like I should be at eight or ten. I mean, I think I should be at ten, but whatever. Not a big deal. Um, oh no, I, I'm, I actually did forget. Yeah, because I just long rested. And I know I was at this amount of life because I didn't consider healing the red guard instead of myself. I think I was at 10, I should be at 12, but whatever, 9 to 11 makes sense. I mean, this is fine. Uh, yeah, basically, like, I don't want to give up on the damage from Retaliate by moving back. And if I go back here, they're actually, the one that comes through is going to hit the Void Warden. It's just going to be a small attack on the Void Warden, but I still think, actually, I guess these are fives. But again, I think outgoing damage, like, tempo just matters more than life at this point. So let's go there with this, and then we're going to do this top, which creates fire, and gives us one additional shield. So we have three shield, and eight, plus some from items. Okay, so the hounds go. So this one goes here. I think you have four movement on number two, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So this one goes there. So the first one just attacks us for three, and then the next one attacks us for five. Okay, so we don't use any shield items on that one, and it takes three to retaliate. And then the other, so four, so this will just use one charge of our hide armor. Again, better to use that because we can't control when we use it. 
Uh, six four retaliate. Okay. Do love the shield spikes build. All right, the scouts attack us. They have range three, so we're at range them. That was the other argument for moving back, because they wouldn't be able to hit us. But whatever, these things are attacking for two into our three shields. So I'm not super worried. Okay, so three, no damage. One, no damage. All right, so then the hatch is up. So we're going to do the bottom of power pitch. Just move to here. Create wind. And then we're going to do an attack three, range three. And I will throw the favorite just to try to kill because then next turn I can use boots plus retrieval right yeah I have boots and I have retrieval to use the favorite again yep okay so I'll throw the favorite into this regular hound here I have advantage because it's strengthened sure all right the favorite's there okay the shaman goes it's minus one movement so he has two movement uh, yeah, I guess he can find focus over here, and he puts a bless into their deck. Okay. So, retrieval plus top attack. Initiative's not great, but well, let's hash it. Two cards, earlier initiative, certainly. For us, we have the fire. So this, do I care about creating light going into the next rest cycle? This for this? Not so much. I think making the attacks disadvantage is probably worth more. Oh, no, 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 hold up, hold up. This, the other card I'm playing is a top. Yeah, I don't want to play a top heal. I guess we're going to make an attack three. Probably on the shaman or something. Yep. All right, here goes. So Hounds are doing the swarming attacks again. The Shaman is going to multi-target curse. Nice. Solid. Love to see it. What's his range? His range is four, so he's always hitting someone. Void Warden actually has lower initiative and is in line of sight. All right, well, then that's not such a big deal. Um, I mean, I, I just need to be hitting the Shaman, in truth. Hold on. The scouts from jumping and looting. Sure. Yeah, whatever. One, two, three, like this. Using this bottom, consuming fire, gaining one experience and one shield. So the real question is, do we want to move one more? I don't think there's any reason to. I mean, I guess the reason to is to prevent more hounds from attacking. Uh, here do I want hounds attacking, is the question. So let's see what's going to happen normally. So the shaman will be immobilized there. We'll hit, hit, hit. This goes here. Hits. Not a big deal. I mean, sort of, but... And then this one, I mean, no matter what, I guess, yeah. If we go here, this one goes to there, and then this one goes to here, both hit us. Yeah, I think it's better not to get hit an additional time here. We don't have that much shield this turn. Okay, so we make our attack three immobilized, targeting the shaman. If I had one more shield, I think it would be a difference. Okay, nice. It's kind of the best possible thing, because I don't, not only do I not get a curse out of my deck, but I also barely deal any damage. Okay. So then the Shaman goes, he attacks us and the Void Warden. Disadvantage on us, not disadvantage on the Void Warden. I was almost sure there was going to be a crit there on the Void Warden. All right, and he attacks at minus one normally, I think. So we normally hit it for four. So uh, plus one, minus one on the Void Warden, so this is still four. And then here it was a minus one, if I'm not mistaken, on us. Yeah, so minus one on minus one is two, plus we have one shield, so we take one. And he takes one retaliate. Actually, we're going to... Yeah, we have hide armor to use. So he takes two retaliate, we take zero. And we both get a curse. Okay. And loses immobilize. Hounds go. So this one goes here, attacks the Void Warden. Please not a plus one. Okay, well, that's the game. Three plus one is four, we're at four life. To be clear, I don't think we were still play around this in any way. Um, this did require a total of plus two. Like, I mean, I understand there's the crits as well, like the blesses and stuff like that. But again, we just don't have any margin to play around things here at all. And again, this was not a likely outcome, even if it was certainly a, a possible outcome.
it did require plus one plus one because normally this was an attack for three and this was an attack for three and we're at eight life right so normally we should survive these attacks and i don't know the way we play around this is just by having the red guard attack one of the hounds instead of attacking the shaman but that seems so bad because like all these things are pretty insignificant they die pretty easily to the the shield i mean to be clear none of it really matters because look at how long it's going to take us to kill all these enemies in this room um we're like never getting through this room i mean we're never getting through this scenario like if this room was the last room of the scenario i think it would be close to be clear even with this it'd still be close but yeah i mean just not ever these two rooms <laughs> not even close especially considering we have to get all the way back to this right what are these traps even they're like stun traps so no damage traps i guess we have jump but so yeah i mean what i mean is it's not realistic to expect us to beat the scenario to begin with we certainly again can't play around stuff like this okay well that's a game uh see ya and i guess let's just gain a bunch of experience then oh we can actually do the full combo then to have fun we don't have any way of creating ice anymore though uh this gives experience all right so this and this why not Anyway, there it's definitely over. Okay. Um, so then this hound goes to here and attacks the red guard. Those are some those are some flips. Those are some flips. Again, I know there are crits in their deck, but to be clear, the, I mean, I guess now they flip so... Yeah, never mind. I can't even complain at this point. I actually forgot that they flipped out all the ne negatives before. The crits actually don't change anything, because I have the helmet here. I mean, they would have changed something before. I don't know, whatever. Not a biggie. So this is an attack for seven. We have one innate shield and one shield there, so we do two retaliate, and we take five. Yeah. We're not beating this scenario. Okay. Um... So what can I even do here? Wow, I can just like straight up do nothing here, huh? Okay, I guess we're gonna use the bottom of suggestion. We're gonna just move to here. Uh, actually, we're just gonna stay here, who cares? So I guess we'll just do, well, we're gonna do the top of Gift of the Void. We're gonna poison you. We're gonna consume the wind. I don't think you care about it, do you? No. We're going to consume the wind. And we're going to give you an attack 5 with advantage, but not advantage because adjacency. Okay. Perform the very cool move, do nothing. <laughs> with that, that will be our plan with the Void Warden next turn for sure. Okay, and then we're just going to move... I guess we can actually move to this one, right? Because Hatchet is doing retrieval, so Hatchet can actually pick up the favorite from the door. Yep. All right. So we'll move to here with suggestion. Again, we're definitely getting coins and every opportunity. Oh yeah, whatever. Stupid favorite uh, with the Void Warden here. I mean, that's nice. That's at least the positive of this. Is we picked up five coins with the Void Warden. Okay, we're done. So Hatchet goes. We're gonna do a move one, loot one, which gets us this and this. I'm just gonna keep the favorite around here because then I'm gonna throw it again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got follow through and a bunch of other attacks, so at the same time, I guess all these enemies are kind of clumped up, so they're pretty good for us. This is the enemy that I'd like to kill because he's isolated. So, sure, let's actually do that. So we'll throw the favorite here, attacking this hound. Mm. Might as well use the goggles here. I'd love to get a kill on this. Okay. Ah, unnecessary goggles. Actually, no, not bad goggles. We got rid of a curse. Okay, so this is dead. it's there and then the scouts ah yeah but it's not gonna well damn I mean I guess now this one's separated these three still work whatever all right short rest here no pay one Okay. I'm not going to track this one here at this point, because this over there, the purpose of that is... Ba all right, well, all right. I guess, let me clarify. 
if I somehow win the scenario, I will give credit to the one bottom action performed here with Taunting Fate. I'm just doing this here just to have done it once and to have had fun with it. Not because I think this is actually the best. I mean, it's not the best or worst thing to do in any way. It just doesn't matter at all whether we do this or not. Actually, there's a dark there. So, yeah, basically, like, it just doesn't change anything for the scenario. Therefore, it's not significant, which I'm just not going to count this in any way for a Taunting Fate turn. I'm just doing this to have fun here, not because it's... It's particularly relevant in my ability to, success, to successfully complete the scenario. All right, uh, well, we need to short rest on the red guard. Were there coins for them to pick up that I missed? No. Um, I mean, I don't know. If I lose this, I'm never beating the scenario, but I don't think I'm beating the scenario anyway, but technically, sure. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm never beating the scenario. To be clear, I have... So other than playing the persistent losses on... Hatchet and Red Guard, which again is kind of core to these classes. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, whatever. Again, I think we're not supposed to. Oh, actually. No, yeah, because without. Oh, but we can't get to it anyway. Yeah, sure. So, again, without playing. I have played a loss in both of these classes, but they're still. They're 10 card classes, and they, they're built. I mean, they can be built around. Well, they're here, definitely built around playing uh, Prison Loss, and here, where we have built it around playing Prison Loss, so I don't think that's so much like playing a loss. So to be clear, we haven't played any losses, nor had to lose any cards to negate damage on either of these two characters. And we have one, two, three, four turns left on each of them. Which, to be clear, four turns probably is enough. I mean, should be enough to kill everything in this room and maybe get the chest. So honestly, I think even if we had... like, All right, let's imagine that we did this. So it, it wouldn't even be twice as fast, right? It would have still taken longer. But let's say we did this like 50% faster. There's still no world in which we're able to kill everything in this room and then get the chest. And I mean, I guess we just like have the exhausting person get the chest and have the other two people run here. Again, if it was just to get these chests, sure. But to kill all the enemies in these rooms and get the chests, like I actually don't think, I don't think even if we split up that we have any chance of winning this here. Again, part of that does, I guess, come to the fact that Void Warden's exhausting like this turn, but I don't know. I'm not even sure that that's that big of a deal. I legitimately just don't think we could beat this scenario with this party at plus two difficulty. But at the same time, like, the difficulty, I don't even know. I mean, it, yeah, it, it takes a little bit longer because it takes us longer to kill stuff. I don't know. This is just such a... I had actually forgot about this scenario, but it's, it's kind of just... So what I mean is, like, if I'd increase the difficulty... Or, sorry, if I drop the difficulty, I would have a better chance of beating this scenario. But that would just mean that I would spend even less time in combat and more time just walking from room to room to room to room. Which is so uncompelling for a scenario of Gloomhaven. Alright. Um, I mean, combat is what makes Gloomhaven fun, right? You got an Isaac call out? In, in what regard? Oh, on his, like, um, Frosthaven update? Do tell. Okay. Uh, so what are we doing here? On BGG. Interesting. In what regard? I'm sitting poorly again. Damn it. I guess just shield and focus fire on the shaman. Yeah, we can get disarmed. If we get disarmed, we get disarmed again. I don't think we can play around anything. I'm going to need a little bit more context than that. Slash explanation than that. I mean, I guess you don't have to. Otherwise, you can provide the link and I'll check it out off stream. I did a big list of changes people noticed on Reddit, and I guess he used it as a guide. Ah, interesting. So, is Isaac admitting at this point that Jaws of Lion rules are going to be in, in Frosthaven? Is that it? So, I guess we push this away and then shoot it. Sure. Push it away and shoot it. So we don't have disadvantage, obviously. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, at some point. Again, it's not such a big deal because it sort of doesn't matter. Like I said, there's no world in which we're beating the scenario at this point. But it, it sort of just feels like it's just rubbing salt in the wound there. Just twisting the knife, you know, just because it can. All right. 
moves to here, attacks the red guard. This also actually sucks because now we're, the Resigned Frenzy is going to be even worse since this isn't going to be next to that. Our Resigned Frenzy is really going to suck. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, attacks the red guard. <laughs> I mean, I guess, again, we draw the negatives of another deck. All right, plus one, minus one, so four. We have no shielding abilities left, so we take four. And we're disarmed. All right, Void Warden's up. I mean, this is just even so pointless at this point. In truth, we're going to get to force these to attack each other. Oh, yes. The dream. It's not even worth it. Uh, legitimately, I'd rather just gain two experience this way and then maybe get another turn of gain experience slash coins. All right, let me just check this link. Well, no, I'll check the link on not because right now we're still on the VOD. I'll do it after the stream. I mean, not after the stream, in between scenarios. Okay, so we're going to heal for six at range two, and we're going to do a move that attacks. It's going to heal ourselves because we're greedy. Give them another plus. Just their deck stacked with pluses. I love it. Um, I could not attack, but that's no fun. So let's attack this scout here. Again, I'm overwinning here, right? Why not? Okay, uh, so then, let's do a move jump, shall we? Is there light to consume for shield? No, there's not. I'm just going to grab a coin. I'm just going to grab a couple coins before, before our slow and inevitable demise here. All right, hatchet. We're going to use the bottom of follow-through just to push the scout back to here, and then we're going to attack the scout. We've already used the goggles at this point. Yeah. Ooh. Hatchet still believes, let me tell you that. So this is actually dead. So now we've got... Oh, it, it hoovered up the favorite, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh no, not this again. Alright, well whatever. At least the favorite's still there. Who cares? Okay. Uh, Roaming Scout goes. This one's going to attack here. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a ranged attack. It can move away to lose disadvantage. So here we go. This is where one of the blesses comes out. Yeah, it does. I mean, whatever. It's four damage. It's not the end of the world. I say that, and the hounds are coming for me, and then it's gonna hurt. Hmm. Oh no, I don't need. To, I don't need to be doing this. It does it automatically? We can do this. All right. So minus two movement goes to here. Attacks. All right. That's another lost card. Which is our last card. I could have gone invis. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I should have gone invis, actually. Oh, well. Too late now. It, again, it doesn't matter. I can't beat this scenario. Uh, end round. Discard, 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 discard. Alright, let's just play one more round of getting coins. And then put an end to it, shall we? I guess I want a short rest, because that way I can get experience on top. So let's do that. Uh, no, that's the one I want to keep, so I'll reroll. Get one life. I need a short rest here, because I want to move three, so I can make it that two stack of coins. Obviously, <laughs> as a hatchet, that's pretty appealing. And then I can do a top action, which actually gives me experience and power pitch. Uh, here we can long rest. Okay. Red guard's up. Oh, this is going to mobilize there. That's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll just go to here. I think I meant... Did I? I think that coin up there I set to the side when I looted it last turn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, and I meant to give it to the red guard. I was just doing other things. I'm pretty sure that belongs to the red guard. Someone's welcome to correct me if I was wrong there, but I believe that was the coin that I grabbed from here and I just set to there. Because otherwise, were there any coins that they looted? I guess that would have been the other explanation. I don't believe so. I believe the turn that they looted, there were no coins looted here. And, like, there could have been coins looted down here, but I don't think I would have set them up here. So I'm pretty sure that was just the coin from there. Also, because I think I had two coins, or three coins already. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the sound attacks here. Sure. Why not? All right. So the hatchet goes. We're going to gain two experience. We're going to do an attack six. We'll target the hound. Why not? Okay. Defeated. Go here. Grab these two coins. 
All right. I mean, I could milk it for a little bit more money, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to concede defeat here. Again, there's no beating this scenario at this point. Not even close to being close. We've got two turns left. I mean, technically we have one turn left there. We could have had two turns left there, two turns left here. Again, two turns. Doesn't even seem like it's enough to beat this room. I mean, it's enough to probably kill all the enemies and maybe grab the chest. If this was all we had to do, I think I... I mean, if this room was all we had to beat still, then I would have definitely still kept playing the scenario and tried my best. But yeah, as was having this and this still to do, it's actually just insane. Man, I cannot... I can't believe I'd forgotten how absurdly difficult the scenario is. I guess, again, it's just a three-player thing. And probably the last time I played the scenario was not three players. And again, the limited movement from Jaws. Okay, uh, well, that's another failure to the list. Um, so let's do... Oh, so we can we can just do the thing. All right, we're going we're gonna to trust in TTS here. So we go to Battle Inner... No, Game Setup. Scenario Lost. So we still didn't get a level there, brutal. We did get a level here though, that's nice. How many failures are on the list anyway? On the list? I don't quite understand. I mean, scenario failures, I understand is kind of what you're referring to, but I didn't quite understand that. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, yeah. To be honest, my my brain is, it's been, yeah. Well, I think just, I'm actually, I'm trying to make excuses, but in reality, I think a lot of times I speak so fast and say so many things that I don't remember what I said a minute ago most of the time, or 30 seconds ago, so that that's on me, sorry. Um... And also, this has been, like, last week and this week are sort of a nightmare for me in terms of, hold on, noisy biker, in terms of how much stuff I've had to do. I haven't had, I legitimately have, I, I got to play, we got to play one scenario of Spirit Island for about two and a half hours on Saturday night, and that's been my only me time for the last week, and going into this week as well, that's going to be it. Just because of all the Gloomhaven stuff I've had to do, on top of all the stuff for getting ready for my green card appointment, it's just been a... And then I've got the Asmodee stream tomorrow as well. It's just all piled on. This coming weekend is sort of just going to be like... I don't even know. I, I can't even fathom how amazing it's going to feel. All right, but yeah, there, there are a fair number of failures on the list. No, 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 actually, sorry. At this point, we have two failures on the list, but the list will certainly grow. But again... Like, I think this is good. If I only win, then it's not very interesting. I think the way we lost... Like, all right. How to put this. The way we lost Scenario 10 was interesting because, well, it was just random, but at least it, it was a scenario where it showed we could win, right? I I think there's nothing better in Gloomhaven than either narrowly winning or narrowly losing scenarios. Because in either case, it sort of shows that most of the time you could have maybe done something a little bit differently, or it could have gone differently, and it's very satisfying either way. Or frustrating, but frustrating in a sort of good way. Here, this scenario was sort of frustrating in a bad way, in the sense that, again, I guess this comes down to the way I approached it, but also, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I guess maybe I was just supposed to know to approach it differently from the beginning. At the same time, I don't know. I mean... I have played it before, so I certainly should have, I guess, known this. I don't, I don't know. I just didn't remember it being this arduous. But yeah, it, it, it was just unfortunate because basically from the point where we were here, or even just like moving from here to here, from this room to this room, I kind of already knew that I wasn't going to be able to beat the scenario, which was sort of just like dead man walking sort of situation, which is a little bit less satisfying um, and a bit more frustrating in a bad way. Rather than, not like frustrating, like, oh, damn, I was so close. More like... Really? Like, I don't know. Anyway. All right. So we did our post stuff. Well, not really. The feeling when you need exactly that plus two TI. You don't consider streaming to be me time? Uh, to finish and you got it. Oh, that plus two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean, Red. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um... I enjoy streaming, but it is exhausting, is the best way to put it. Like, how to put this? 
I'm happy to be streaming, and I don't regret doing it. And I'm certainly not doing it for the money or anything like that. I enjoy doing it because it's fun interacting with the community and everything. But it is... It is extremely taxing, I should say, to stream. Um, after I finish streaming for the day, I am exhausted. Which is, I don't know, I guess it... Again, it depends kind of on what you're streaming. I suppose if you're streaming like a first-person shooter or something like that, I guess that's like sort of physically taxing. I don't know. It's just I try to play at a very high level and be very focused for a very long period of time while streaming, while also like talking and stuff like that. So it it's very... Uh, it's like heavy mental burden, I suppose. So yeah, that's sort of why it's... So it's not me time in the sense that I'm... I don't know. I, I, it's different to put it. Your wife is some kind of saint for putting up with so much <laughs> Yeah, for sure. My wife is amazing. Although, again, she also loves Gloomhaven. My first Gloomhaven campaign was played through with her. All right, all right, all right. Let's get to, let's get to the end of the scenario stuff here. So, obviously, no battle goals once again. That's unfortunate. Uh, click and drag. Oh no, TTS is doing the stuff where it starts being weird. Anyway, I need to restart TTS before the next scenario anyway, because it's getting a little bit uh, laggier. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes TTS does the stuff where you like can't select things and stuff like that. It just becomes really weird. But regardless, I don't need to worry about that stuff right now. Let's just do our level up because I'm sure that that's interesting to put at the end of this VOD to at least have something to have looked forward to at the end here. Okay, so mm, oh God. you can see that like sometimes, and then the mouse. Yep. Yeah. This is this is TTS. Okay. Okay. Never mind. I'm gonna st I'm gonna cut the video here VOD here before I go insane. I'm gonna cut the VOD and we'll do the leveling up at the beginning of the next VOD. So that way I can just restart TTS. All right, uh, so we will, uh, no, because I guess people would probably want to watch, I mean, maybe they'd want to watch the leveling up without necessarily wanting to spoil themselves for whatever the next scenario is going to be. So, okay, no, no, no. We'll just try to deal with TTS mannerisms here. All right, so level three for the red guard. It's so, like, you see, I'm clicking here, but it doesn't select the thing sometimes. And then like the scrolling in and out stops working sometimes. I don't know, this is just stuff that happens on TTS. So, Stranglin' Chain, which is an attack three immobilize. Each time the target is attacked this round, it suffers one damage. To signify this, place one of your character tokens on the target. And if we consume fire, it's two damage instead. And the bottom is a move four immobilized target all adjacent enemies. And on the other hand, we have Wrath of the Sun, which is a pretty powerful top loss. Reasonable, certainly. And then a bottom heal four range one that creates light. This is actually a really difficult choice. Let's go take a look at these cards next to our other cards, right? I mean, all the red guard levels up, level ups are difficult choices, which is what makes it so satisfying to play a red guard. So the real question is, we, again, we sort of saw here why we need more movement. So it wouldn't be bad to have another move forward. This immobilized target all adjacent enemies can function similarly to the bottom of healing sands in that it will make ranged enemies attack us while we have shield, which is pretty valuable uh, since we get direct damage to them. The top is also, also, is also quite reasonably useful. Uh, sort of so-so in this party, but still. Um, I mean, we played with this top a lot before. It's not very easy with these characters in our party to set it up them always attacking the same target as us after us. So the top was a little bit less impressive than I thought. Also, it's not super easy for us to generate fire. We really, I mean, we have two fire generators, but we really don't want to bring the other one back in. And we're going to have to cut, we're already going to have to cut a card for this. So, and our one fire that we generate here already has like two things we want. I think at this point, we're almost certainly just going to be cutting shield of the desert. Um... But yeah, so basically if I was taking Strangling Chain at this point, it would be more for the bottom of the initiative. I mean, mostly for the bottom, I guess. More so than the top. Hmm. And then Warmth of the Sun. This would basically just be for a bottom heal, which is not bad in combat. I don't care about the light generation too much. Now, like, obviously I understand if you're playing this build with access to most items in Gloomhaven, then there's a really good reason for having this bottom. I think that's normally what you would take, but not here. Light is less valuable. If this were fire, I think I would almost certainly just take Warmth of the Sun. Because, yeah, I mean, another fire generator, which is a heal four, would be great. I mean, heal four is still really good on bottom. A lot of the times we do need to do other things on bottom. I mean, we have two of our ways of getting shield on bottom, and then we also just like often have to move and then have also this direct damage. And also, this card's not very long for the world, though. That's tough. I don't know. Chat, what would you take? 
Are you doing the Shield Spikes build? Yeah, we are doing the Shield Spikes build. I guess we should take a look at what the other level 2 card was. Uh, can we please zoom? So, like, here I'm scrolling. Okay. Radiant Sickle. Yeah, I mean, Radiant Sickle's good, but I think it's not as good as either of these, probably. Yeah, last time when we did our Jaws of the Lion campaign, we played Red Guard, not Shield Spikes build. This time in Basement Maven, I'm definitely doing Shield Spikes build. Shield Spikes build, I think, is really fun, and I'm enjoying doing it. I like cards the same move for. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of what I'm leaning towards as well. Again, we have such limited movement with Jaws characters. I think picking up any move for we can is good, and Strangling Chain will do something some amount of the time. I guess the, the biggest thing is, even if the top isn't going to get activated much with the fire, it's just such a consistent bottom for us. Okay. Now, you go Wrath. Warmth of the Sun. <sighs> Can't wait for one more level. I guess the other downside is we're taking another thing that wants fire when we're really going to want Burn Away in the Dark at uh, level 4, but... What are the other options if you do a non-shield spike build and is one clearly better than the other? So if you do a non-shield spikes build, you just, you still like the card shield spikes because the bottom, all right, so let me actually, that's a very fair question. I can quickly go through this. Um, so here are level up choices up to this point. Here are the other cards that we haven't brought. I basically don't think you need to worry about these two cards that much. This card is really just useful when there's traps to pull into, specifically in the first room, and this is a boss fight card. So we'll keep those two cards to the side. But these two cards there we go matter of it um okay so basically even if you don't do a shield spikes build you'll typically end up bringing the card shield spikes no matter what let's be clear about that because the bottom is actually very good as well which is what makes shield spikes great this is actually kind of a trend that all the the core persistent losses have for the jaws characters i don't know if demo is persistent loss if demo even has one but like for example let's i guess we can show rather than tell right uh So these are the other persistent losses for the other two classes. So here, for example, we really want Master Influence on the Void Warden, but the bottom is great, right? Blast range 2, Poison range 2, create an ele a relevant element. And then here, this is our only move jump. It's 17 initiative, which is really good for the fav or the, the favorite. The hatchet and the wound is kind of situational, but it's still fine. So again, it's sort of a trend that the these are sort of like power cards in the sense that the persistent loss is always going to be very good or often very good for the class, but the other half of the card is also very good. Sort of tempt you or in scenarios where you don't feel like you have the time either the longevity or the time to set up the persistent loss, you can use the bottom. So for the red guard, the persistent loss is actually good for one specific build, whereas these are good for any build for those two characters. I mean, basically. But if you don't use the persistent loss, you'll typically still want to create shields, keep shield spikes just because fire is so good for you. Um, and it's typically sort of the better element of your two. You typically have more light and it's less valuable, whereas fire is very valuable. Even from level one, again, a free shield here is good on any build. And the biggest one, obviously, at level one is the top of Shield of the Desert. Like the light here, like obviously the dream is to get both. It's a ringing in my headset. Or. Yeah. Seems fine now. I was afraid it would be my ear, but no, it's just my headset. Um. Obviously, the dream is to get both the elements here, but realistically, like if you can only get one of the two, the fire is obviously better than the light. So yeah, so fire is a very valuable valuable element for us, so we're always going to want this card. So what do we do if we don't do shield spikes? So if we don't do shield spikes, we certainly never take this card at level two. Um, first, let's look at level one. So at level one, the, this card doesn't become very valuable either. The only really appealing card thing about this card is that it is a bottom attack two with 13 initiative with the element that we care less about, but typically at level one, you're going to be looking at something like this. Where is yeah, you and you, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So you'll you'll pretty much use these ten cards. So the cards that we wouldn't use at level one would be Warmth of the Sun. Again, this this top specifically good for the Shield Spikes build. The bottom is fine, and it is 13 initiative, but you've got plenty of good initiatives, and you've got plenty of good things to do on bottom. This is a better bottom anyway, and has a better top. So, obviously worse initiative, but you have plenty of initiatives. And then these two cards over here, the other two level 1 cards I typically wouldn't take. This... The repositioning on this bottom is okay, but you just have so many good cards that you can't really afford this one. I do bring this on boss fights early on, because an attack 7 with, dis with advantage is obviously pretty great. And it's pretty easy with a Void Warden in your party. I mean, I guess if you don't have Void Ward, maybe the top becomes less good. And then this, yeah, I don't know. I generally just found this not to be very impressive. Um, I know some people like this more than I do. I really only consider this good if there's going to be traps that you can pull things into. Because otherwise, 
it requires elements, which is not always the easiest thing to do, especially the fire, which you have kind of better uses for. If you have both these elements, you'd rather use Shield of the Desert than this anyway. So again, I just kind of consider this card to be highly situational, I guess I would say. But it's really not bad. I mean, the thing is, none of the red guard cards are bad. So those would be the three cards that I wouldn't use at level one. And then at level two, uh, come on. Come on, TTS. There we go. At level two, you definitely take Harvest Sickle over uh, Barbaric Instincts. Harvest Sickle is just great. It's just an, getting an attack four already at level two is good. The fact that it's range two is not necessarily better or worse than being a melee attack. It's sort of just different because sometimes it'll mean you'll have to move away to not get disadvantage. The move on the top is useful, though. Yeah, that's fair. The move on top does do something, I guess. That's the biggest argument for that card. Because you do have a lot of nice bottoms. That being said, a lot of your bottoms are just movement anyway. Um, with the exception of, like, I mean, it's not like you really, like, want to move and heal, right? And then other than that, you have move, 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 which is move a shield. Like, yeah, theoretically, it can put you in position to do a AoE 1 damage with either of this or this. But I also consider that to be sort of low impact rather than just doing a better top attack and doing a move on bottom. And then otherwise, you have, like, this, which is pretty good, but also requires fire, which the top also wants elements. So I still don't think it syncs up that well. I also think in general... God, so now my mouse wheel doesn't work. I'm just scrolling here infinitely. When TTS starts bugging out, it just gets insane. Um, well, anyway, I can't mouse wheel right now, so it is what it is. Uh, um, I think people also overvalue top moves a little bit, if I'm being perfectly honest. I think top moves are more like a crutch for when you have bad positioning rather than um, an, uh, an essential tool. What I mean by that is a lot of times what you could do with a top move, you could have done just by moving into that position the following round anyway, going late. And because the red guard has such good early initiative, you typically don't get punished for making this sort of play where you move into the spot late and then you can do the both the bottom non-move bottom you wanted as well as a top attack the following round because you can almost always go before most enemies on the red guard because you have great initiatives. Now, this isn't always true, and top moves do have some application, especially in movement-heavy scenarios. But anyway, so at level 2, you should definitely take Harvest Sickle if you're not doing Shield Spikes. This is just pretty obvious. This is really only that appealing for Shield Spikes. You've already got a bottom attack that wounds anyway. Obviously, this is a bit better than this, considering the initiative, but it's not even close to the, the attack 4 here. And this is a great loss at the end of scenarios. So this is a really not close choice. I mean, it's cool because the level 2 choice, like, depending on whether... If you're doing Shield Spikes, you're always taking this, and it, well... If you're doing shield spikes, I guess you have access to a certain glue payment item, you could still do this. But if you're doing shield spikes and you don't have access to that item, then you're doing this. And if you're not doing shield spikes, you're doing this. And then at level three, ultimately, I don't think it matters too much. I mean, as we kind of established here, I think you can really take either of these cards. Uh, I do generally think Strangling Chain is just a little bit better. But again, with a certain item in Gloomhaven, this becomes very appealing. And heal four is good. If your party is light on healing, like obviously with a Void Warden, we have tons of healing. So I don't need healing that badly. If I were playing, let's say, in a party with like Red Guard, um, Hatchet, and Demo instead of Void Warden, then I'd actually probably be more inclined to take Warmth of the Sun at level 3, just because I wouldn't have that much healing and I'd really appreciate another heal. And my allies would also appreciate another heal, specifically the Demo, who can't heal himself without losses, and is also in sort of often in melee range near us, we would be able to heal the Demo kind of often with this. Okay, and as far as which of the builds is better, I legitimately don't think that there's a... Uh, a definite answer to that. Obviously, it depends from Base Gloomhaven and in Jaws of the Lion, because you have access to different items. I think the Shield Spikes build scales better into Base Gloomhaven than Jaws of the Lion, just because in Jaws of the Lion you have such a smaller item pool, and obviously Shield Spike stacks really well with shield items. It's not that the armor versions in Base Gloomhaven are necessarily better than the Jaws of the Lion armor, they're kind of just different. But there's just a lot more things that give shield in terms of items in base Gloomhaven than Jaws Lion. So I think Shield Spikes gets better in Jaws in base Gloomhaven than it is in Jaws. In Jaws, I don't think one is really better than the other. I mean, I don't think one's necessarily better than the other in either case. Maybe the non-Shield Spikes build is slightly better in Jaws, and the Shield Spikes build is probably even in base Gloomhaven. The thing is, they just function differently, right? So the Shield Spikes build means you're going to do less. Your, your single target damage is going to be worse. I mean, we literally see this at level 2, right? Non-shield spikes, you get an attack 4. Level 2, you get a shield. Or shield spikes, you get a, two, a shield. So shielding and shield spikes is really good against multiple and multiple attackers and is less good against like in boss fights and against single strong enemies and summoners, stuff like that. Because shield spikes is only good if if you're happy to have enemies attack. Or if you're happy to let enemies just go, do their turns, and attack, right? Because if you gain two shield, and so you mitigate half their damage, or for smaller enemies you mitigate even more, and you deal a bunch of damage back, this is great. But if the threatening thing an enemy does is summon, or make giant attacks like a night demon attacking for eight, 
Shield Spikes gets pretty bad in those situations. So it really just, it's very monster dependent. Accordingly, you can't really say which build is better because it just depends on the scenarios you're going to run into. Obviously, with 95 scenarios in Gloomhaven, and I mean, technically not really 30, but I don't know, like 20 ish scenarios you're going to run it, you can run into in Jaws. Um, it's just really going to depend which ones you do. I mean, I guess Jaws, you mostly do the same scenarios. I don't know Jaws that well. I've only done like 12 scenarios of it. So I couldn't say. In Gloomhaven, it's really just going to depend which scenarios you do when you're playing the builds. Um, if you do a lot of scenarios with singular strong enemies, then Shield Spikes is going to feel kind of mediocre, and you probably would have been happier with the other build. If you do a lot of AoE fights, like for example, this scenario against Hounds and Vermling Scouts, Shield Spikes is just incredible, right? Most of the time, they don't deal damage when we shield up, and we do a bunch of damage back. This just dominates. Obviously, these are also some of the easier enemies in Gloomhaven, so it sort of varies. But I think Shield Spikes is also really fun. It's also because, and I've kind of talked about this before, about a certain class in Gloomhaven, it's that, like, so to be clear, in RPGs and stuff like that, I am not a tank player um, at all. I'm, like, a mage, necro, summoner player. It's sort of my, my style. Or support. Any of these things. Not really rogues or melee damage dealers or ranged damage dealers. More like casters, basically. And, so, and tanks is probably the furthest from what I like to play. But... Tanking is so interesting in Gloomhaven because, especially as an experienced player, you spend like 90 to 95% of your time in Gloomhaven always playing the same way, which is um, focus firing targets to kill them quickly so that they don't attack, using crowd control and movement and initiative to make sure that enemies can't really get many attacks off. You sort of just like are constantly doing the same sort of dance of initiative and CC and focus fire to prevent enemies from making many attacks. Because you learn very early on in Gloomhaven, tanking doesn't exist, or at least that's what you think, right? You play with the Brute, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be a tank. And then you try to, like, in that first room, run into the, the four or six guards or whatever that you're going to face. And then you just get demolished, and you have to pitch two cards, or maybe you don't even know about pitching cards, and so you're just dead. And you're like, hmm, tanking is not a thing. And, and I think that's a big wake-up call to a lot of people. And it's good that people learn this very on in Gloomhaven, very early on in Gloomhaven. But then it's great that suddenly, like, later on, whereas before tanking wasn't a thing, you're like, oh, wait, I actually can do tanking, you know? And sure, you can't do it all the time. Or, I mean, normally you shouldn't be able to do it all the time. Obviously, there are some broken combinations that kind of break this rule. But uh, I think it's great when you have a class where you can perform tanking as a function. And I think it's really fun and interesting and unique. And it's a cool twist on how you normally play Gloomhaven, which is why it really appeals to me. Uh, again, not because I inherently like tanking, but just because I like seeing seeing Gloomhaven from a different scope or a different lens, basically. So that's why I went for the Shield Spikes build here. Also because I've done the other build previously. Yes, please. Thank you. Sorry. That is my amazing wife asking me if I want my coffee now. And I do. All right. Um, so yeah, we, we took Strangling Chain here. Oh, God. TTS, come on. Don't be like this. I'll switch the cards out appropriately next time. We can do that for the next scenario anyway, but I do just need to grab my perk. Okay, so we've already... We're just going to continue down the path of getting rid of all the minus ones, and then we'll do this next. Because again, this also removes a plus one, which makes it slightly worse here than just going minus ones to plus ones. Since this is actually sort of a net... Um, like here, our total damage in our deck nets plus two. Same with here as well, right? Here, our total damage in our deck actually nets plus one, not plus two. Because we are actually removing a plus one and a minus two, so we're just going up one instead. So therefore, I think it's better for us to do these and these first, and then this afterwards. All right. This is going to be fun trying to make this work. I'm also going to have to remove... Oh, maybe it did remove all the curses and stuff. I guess we'll see. So we did the scenario one or lost thing. All right. Down here you go. Here's a plus one. We get another plus one at some point. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I forgot. We're doing the different perks. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a remove two minus ones. Yeah, 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 I forgot. We had the modified perk deck based off of uh, having to have. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, God, where did that go? Did it go down there? God damn you, TTS. Oh, I'm going to lose it. can't scroll the mouse wheel i just sometimes when tts does this it's, just, it's so frustrating to have something that you're trying here so like here for example i'm clicking on this and it just doesn't work uh it does this more and more often these days it's kind of annoying and it happens to my friends as well like how do i come on now 
All right, whatever. I'll cut the VOD. I'm going to restart TDS. I can't. So I need to remember to remove another minus one. Just to be clear again, uh, since this was confusing, maybe remember that these are actually, each of these perks is actually removed two minus ones. And then this was add two plus two, two plus ones and ignore negative item effects because we had to change our perk, our modifier or our perks slightly to accommodate for needing the negative item, uh, needing the negative item effects perk for base loop haven. Instead of taking remove minus two and remove minus one, is it worth taking plus one shield instead? You mean instead of removing, remove minus two and remove plus one is it plus one shield? Uh, yeah, maybe. That's an interesting consideration as well. Plus one shield is a lot worse of a perk, obviously, on the brute, but here our initiatives are amazing. And for shield spikes, yeah, that's definitely a consideration. I don't know. I like getting rid of the negative modifiers for my deck so much, but that might actually even be better. You're not wrong. But regardless, this is actually a minus. Remove two minus ones here, so we should always do this first. All right. So I'm going to cut the VOD.